everyone, Joshua Hanlon here, and I am at Brick Fair Virginia 2018, and today I'm joined by Caden, and we are going to be giving you a tour of the whole convention floor here at Brick Fair. So, Caden, if you want to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you build. So, uh, I've been coming to Brick Fair Virginia for four years now. I build uh, mainly Pacific, uh, World War II, um, Western Front, all the islands and stuff. So some great military builds, which is always, as we, we'll see as we walk around, there's a lot of military builds featured here, so it's always fun to see those. And I think we also need to point out your excellent brick badge here. This is some next level brick badge. <laughs> Six magnets, hinges, whole, whole nine yards. It still falls apart, but, you know, it works. It's very impressive. And with that, we'll start in right here then with the mosaics and make our way through. So this first build we have is, I believe, based on a photograph, and you can see it in the bottom left corner there. And it's kind of interesting because there's the, the flat mosaic portion and they kind of added the greenery on top. Yeah, they use uh, the tan and the pink kind of inter interlocked with each other as well as some of the trans clear near the bottom. That's a really nice color combination that kind of stands out. Mm -hmm. It captures the photo very nicely there. And then here, this looks like maybe Ninjago inspired based on the characters there. I feel like I think Ninjago fans will recognize some of those characters. Next to that, we have a build. This is by Alan T. Hickman, uh, his eye build, which is just incredible. This mosaic, all his different layering here uh, with the black tiles and then the pink. And I mean, I don't even know how many dozens of colors there are in this build. I think the use of, the use of tiles and then the layering of plates next to them and on top of them adds another level of depth that you don't really see, especially in mosaics, because mosaics, you know, they're usually like a single layer that's kind of layered in separate ways. But using like the, the wedge plates up in the right corner, uh, and like the use of some of the different color tiles and small spots here and there is really cool. Yeah, lots of extra detail added in that way. Here's some nice ones. I like these because these are kind of logo type builds. And so these are cool because it's not your typical square frame type of mosaic. And they're much more dynamic and fun to look at. Yeah, I saw somebody carrying that one yesterday. I was scared they were going <laughs> to drop it. <laughs> that G.I. Joe one looks a little fragile there. <laughs> And then if we move down here some more, you've got a couple builds by Byron here and a wild Shiloh popping up behind. <laughs> there we go. So these are some very impressive uh, superhero Hulk and Wonder Woman builds. And then if we keep moving down, uh, do you have some builds here, Shiloh? Yes, I have a mosaic of Kane Highwind from Final Fantasy IV. And to the right of me is Cloud Strife from uh, Final Fantasy VII, probably the best video game ever made. And uh, that's what I got here. So, okay. Sweet. Nice. So. Glad you can make it out. Thanks for bringing the mosaics. That sounds good. <laughs> In between those two, though, is a couple of really amazing mosaics here as well that we should definitely mention. I think you've got the Joker on the right and Harley Quinn on the left. Yeah, those are those are really cool. The base plates in the background. I don't know if they're spray painted or something, but those are those are add another layer of depth. That's uh, that's that's really cool. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't think those are normal Lego base plates by any means. I feel like they'd be a lot more than $15 if they were regular <laughs> Lego base plates. And then here's one. I think we've shown this in past videos. This is The Last Supper, which is just amazing. When you get up close, it's actually hard to see the details. You've got to stand halfway across the room to, to really appreciate this. Yeah, this, this is phenomenal. Uh, I know they were, when they were set up the stanchions, they pushed them in more so you could pose with it. Okay. Um, but no, this, that's the amount of one by one plates in there sourcing that would be a nightmare <laughs> yeah that kind of stuff just blows your mind when you've got that many of one piece in a build and then another uh build but i, I think the same builder uh, this is the iron giant and this actually is i think a tri-vision mosaic so there's three different designs you can flip this around and it's got all different designs almost like one of those like billboards that flips the designs yeah i think he has lights in it too i don't know if it's on right now but it, it when it's rotating especially during public hours it looks really cool especially like while they're changing you can kind of see them both at the same time oh, right. next to that is the endor uh meets lacoro uh, so this is like Star Wars slash Bionicle, and it, uh, I think as we've shown this video in past or shown this build in past videos, uh, it's gotten more and more Bionicle every time this build is displayed. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen this one, but I mean I also don't hang out near Bionicle a lot, but uh, that's actually that's it's pretty cool the way they kind of mix system and the Bionicle together. Mm -hmm. And then here is a number of 
I think, uh, lenticular mosaics. And so these are different bionicle characters, depending on which way you look at them. You get a nice different angle on them. Those are always fun to, fun to look at. Tilt your head. And then here we start a very large section of Bionicle, and there's a ton of Bionicle. You notice these are like two, two tables deep here uh, with some, some really great stuff all the way down here. This thing here looks very unique. I'm not sure that's an official Lego piece. <laughs> yeah, something to note, like some of these other Bionicles, they're not all like the Technic parts. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of them, like this, this white one right here, that looks like a lot more system than it is Bionicle parts, mm -hmm. which adds the you can add more detail to them that way. Yeah, I think some of the, the high quality builds, that's really what you see is that combination of parts and that's when you can really bring a lot of the, the cool factor out in these. I like that one carrying the white sword, the, the dark blue color there. Yeah. That's, that's really great with kind of the trans green accents. It stands out nice. And the black added to it and the waist cape and some in the head as well. And then down here, this is quite a massive, the Exo Drake V2. It's like a four-legged walker tank-looking thing. I think there's like a guy inside there, isn't yeah. there? It's like a mech inside of a mech. <laughs> That's pretty intense. And then we keep walking down this direction. Lots of cool stuff along here. There's like a giant eyeball build on the back. This one right here, this big black one with the giant wheels on it. The way that head is built, it looks like it uses tires almost as the neck, and it has some smaller system parts in it to create the angles that go with it. That's that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. oh, I love the stand built for this one. It looks like maybe there's some power functions or something, some movement there. I wonder if that stand moves. Yeah. yeah. Almost a steampunk flare to that one for sure. And the one in the back there is quite, quite a large build for Bionicle. Uh, they think the character's sitting down, but definitely stands out and let's see what else catches your eye here as we finish out this section that black one in the back with the sword with the kind of overdraft in the back that's uh that's pretty cool i don't mm -hmm. know what those pieces are but the kind of the contrast between like looks like almost like trans blue to trans green those uh add another level to the like the black and the dark green that's already there for sure yeah there's a lot of impressive builds with uh where they have swords with them that i think are really cool <laughs> giant weapons <laughs> that always adds to it uh, so we'll come down here and finish this section out and then keep moving on so here is uh, the highlight of this build is obviously the shot on the roof right there but I'm sure we could talk about something else besides that as well <laughs> I like the the pizza truck there that's such a cool little pizza truck I've seen that in different city layouts I always like that yeah. uh, quick quick donut break yeah I mean yeah, of course. yeah. <laughs> sure I'll, I'm not gonna pass on a donut thank you <laughs> we'll get back to the commentary in a second. Yeah. It looks like there's almost a motor in that one building. That the black one with the um, scaffolding behind that um, web piece. I don't know if that spins or something, but looks like there's a motor yeah. behind it. And then this is a big yeah train light train track layout. Some of the modular buildings in here. The Simpsons house with like a, a car frame. <laughs> I'm not sure. Smaller cars in the front too here. Those are pretty nice. The race car with the, you can yeah. see inside of it. So they kind of were recreating some of those like maybe Hot Wheels type car designs. We got some cool, I like this, this layout right here as well is with all the lights in it is really neat. The subway station almost looks like down below the down below the town mm -hmm. and then if we keep walking down this direction we should grab uh john real quick do you want to we've got some great builds here and the builder is is with us so uh if you want to introduce yourself real quick and then talk about what you've got here yeah i'm john rudy um from gettysburg pennsylvania and i build lots of disney stuff um so this is a a, a good chunk of my my disney ride vehicles from both walt disney world and disneyland so you've got uh, in a couple different scales. A lot of it's in minifig scale, uh, the ride vehicles in particular. But then you've also got uh, Cinderella Castle and Sleeping Beauty Castle there in a micro scale. So, and those are scaled to each other. 
So that shows you just how much smaller Disneyland is than Disney World. Gotcha. Yeah, I haven't thought about that before. That's, that's really neat to see it like that. So this is, I can tell you're obviously a major Disney fan when you build this much, so I'm sure this is very much kind of a labor of love to recreate these for you. Yeah, I'm just a little bit of a Disney fan. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed. Uh, yeah, this is, this is, it's joy. You know, it's, it's just so much fun to do this. I design most everything in Digital Designer. And then from there, I take it to the brick. So um, this is a lot of fiddling and moving, moving bits around to get those right, the right shapes and the right curves. And that's really where that's really where the joy happens. Is going, okay, is it there? Is it there? And then all of a sudden, there it is. Sure. Well, thank you so much. Appreciate yes, it. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome builds. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so we'll cross the aisle here then and start in on some of these other squares. Looks like we've got kind of just general city stuff all along here. Uh, I like this, the happy cactus. Uh, maybe like a southwestern yeah. restaurant yeah. saloon, yeah. That is that is pretty cool. The tiles, probably I'm guessing on jumper plates or something mm -hmm. to kind of get like different elevations of shingles, and the dark nougat and the medium nougat to add the color variation on top of the dark tan is really cool. And then here's I think the first building I've seen that incorporated the ship in the bottle. So it's like they took the the ship in the bottle and turned it into an actual building there. I like that. And the Max of figure on the Lego store dabbing. <laughs> Oh, it's a seafood restaurant with the ship in the bottle. Even better. Thank you. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> what do we have down here? You can see a few different Lego books here. Shout out to the, the Lego Architect by Tom Elfine. Awesome builder, awesome book. Brick Journal. Got a section of the, the Ninjago City here. They kind of just took a section. Oh, I guess they kind of split it into yeah. different... And the bottom one's over on the far right corner okay. in the back. So it's kind of different sections that they turned into different parts of the city. That set's so cool you can take it apart and still make it into some <laughs> cool buildings. I haven't quite wanted it enough to purchase it, but, you know, when if the time comes. It is, it is a fun build. I'd highly recommend it. So that basketball court there, you've got the plane. And then so we come garden park kind of thing. Some swings and yeah. rope bridge sort of park. And let's see, got some different, uh, it's like they're based on real buildings here, the Washington Square Arch. Then you've got a zoo here. Lego zoos are always so fun to look at because there's so many different details with all the different worlds and everything. So lots of fun, co cool things in there. Yeah, especially like when you look at all the individual enclosures, you can see all the little stuff that they've added. And I like the addition of the, the um, roller coaster that kind of goes around the outside. Because you can you know go around and see all the enclosures from up above. That works well. This person here, shout out, <laughs> shout out to this builder for using Beyond the Brick stickers as like striping on his spaceship. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I think that's uh, Isaac W. So good job. <laughs> And then we'll turn around here, and I think we can start start in over here. I don't know which lug this is. I know it's one of them. Okay. I think you see even one of the, one of the builders hard at work here, still finishing up. So we're shooting this on Friday night right now, this section, and so there everyone's finishing up before the public comes in. So you'll see a lot of builders still hard at work uh, doing what they can to get it ready for the public. Yeah, there's been lots of frantic building. I know some of the other lugs they've had some structural issues that uh, were fixed within the first few days but uh, these these lugs are always amazing to look at especially when you know when they're all done and set up the amount of people that come together to put these things together especially since most of these a lot of these buildings end up being custom uh, as well as like the roads and all that stuff it's fantastic yeah this is this stuff is amazing here and you look at some of these there's another zoo type build got the waterfall coming down under the bridge uh, you move into, there's a giant Starbucks. <laughs> it's a bed and breakfast Starbucks, multi storied <laughs> There you go. What everyone wants, to be able to sleep in a Starbucks. I mean, who doesn't want that? <laughs> I'm not sure what all, what, what all is happening in this scene? Um, this is a mock of the Brick Fair. Oh, okay, oh. so this is a Brick Fair. Okay, so it's like a smaller minifig version of Brick Fair right here. Okay, I like it. Cool, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All sorts of stuff going on. <laughs> and it's like a custom town hall there with some of the 
uses mm -hmm. of instead of using slopes with the um, looks like almost eyelid bricks and dark tan tiles above the windows that adds a really nice kind of not linear not quite linear but not curved yeah yeah I like that and the brick built lettering in town hall a uh, brick built lettering is always one of my favorite things to look at so it's also one of the hardest things it to you know, pull off effectively so you got a fire set up here those fire trucks are very very detailed looks like maybe some custom painting on like the silver metallic pieces yeah and it looks like almost using some older shades of red or like some used red to kind of give them like the darker almost or lighter sleek kind of color There's a couple buildings the this theater on the left is really nice the Legoland movie theater based on a real movie theater in Ashland Virginia is what the the mock card says here so there's maybe some lights in there. well there's definitely some lights in there <laughs> there's lights I love the this kind of flex tubing stuff down here yeah and the uh, the adding of the movie posters in all the windows that adds another extra little little touch to it. That's really cool. This looks like possibly Media Man. I'm not oh it's like a it's like a radio station. I'm not sure exactly what all is happening in there. There's a lot going on in that build. Aliens landing in the corn. Those crop circles are in some nice shapes there. Yeah. Perfectly lettered out to spell our favorite word. <laughs> And this looks like uh, moon base modules sort of layout here. Yeah, it kind of looks like some different themes come together. You got, you know, colorful, and then you got some more space-esque things, like the giant blue sky tower in the back there. That looks really sleek, really yeah, nice. Yeah. And then the, the clear pyramid there as well is also, is also really neat. Added mosaic in the back corner with the trans clear. And then, like, the classic space stuff here in the corner yeah then you get back to the the original classic space those moon base plates and everything there was even like faded white you can tell this has yeah. been some well used yeah I haven't been long enough alive long enough to know what this stuff was but I've uh, picked up on some mm -hmm. of it and then a Blacktron old Blacktron stuff some of the other space themes they even built like a Blacktron castle here I like the turrets on the towers for defense <laughs> And move down here, you've got a take on different superhero stuff. Is that a Millennium Falcon in the color scheme of the um, the ship from, was it Guardians of the yeah, Galaxy? Yeah, yeah. The with Milano, the, I think it is? I think so. Yeah. That's actually, that's kind of, that's really cool. That with is. the eclipsion of the cockpit from that instead of the cockpit for the Millennium Falcon. Mm -hmm. And once again, another cool take on the, the ship in the bottle here. It's a, it's like a pirate theme bar in the bottle. <laughs> that's that's cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shout out to to Jake Sadovich, the the fan designer of that build. Definitely check out our interview we did with him on the channel if you haven't. Uh, and his you can get a, a nice insight into his his design on that. And then keep coming down here. This is Tech Tower from Georgia Tech, so I think that's based on a real building. The parade going on, some of the marching band. Mm -hmm. and crowded and stuff. Like and a number then, of these are based on real buildings. Yeah, and then some of the additions. You got Spider-Man up there, and then the clock tower is actually really, that, that's a really cool build because it looks like it uses flex tubing that kind of bent around, and it has clips on it to keep it in that circle with the mm -hmm. hours on it. And then next we've got a couple really tall towers here, and I think these are actually also based on real things, so. Pricey tower. I'm not sure exactly where it is, but it's uh taller and pinker, so that's that's that one. <laughs> then India Mill. I'm not sure what, where exactly they're based things on, but I think it might be. So it's it's really cool to see those different colors. You see the dark red here. Yeah. The dark red and the, the yellow and then the mm -hmm. dark blue and the tan all kind of work together, especially towards the top. Some of those last few looks like almost stories complement the colors complement each other pretty well. It really does. And here we've got some more train city layout. There's so much going on here. I love this, the guy driving the spider there. <laughs> it's pretty crazy the amount of like fun little details you can pack into a layout like this. Yeah, there's a giant ant back there. Some cannons on some buildings. Mm -hmm. All you know, you, skeleton apocalypse up in the front. <laughs> All sorts of stuff happening. 
So we'll move away from that layout now and come back this direction and see what we have on display over here. So I think this might be uh, like Star Wars. Is this the Rebel Lug? Uh, yeah, I think it might be. Uh, so this is, you're gonna see pretty much all Star Wars as we walk around here, starting with the Force Tree on Octu. Uh, so you can see Luke and Yoda there just almost camouflaged in the middle of the build. Yeah, I really like what they did to get the staircase there with all the wedges and the tiles, add all the curves into it. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. And they have a slideshow playing with some closer up details over there. You can kind of see it from different angles, it looks like. Mm -hmm. And then here is uh, a build. This is the Battle of Crate uh, by Matthew uh, Finelli, and we've actually featured this on the channel before, so you might have, this build might look familiar to you if you've seen that video. Uh, he did this great crate battle here and it was it was always fun chatting with him about that and getting insight into into this whole design yeah from from a war builder myself I can kind of compliment what goes into building some of these these trenches and things mm -hmm. uh, and he's done it phenomenally especially with the building the red into the white and then trying to mix in those grays um, he he does a, did a great job especially the this one right here uh, I like this one especially the way he kind of has it sloped down and then it kind of gets deeper and deeper. I want to point out, the, I don't think when we shot the video the first time that Eagle build was on top there. That's a nice addition that I think should remain on the display. It's like almost one of the Angry Birds figures or something. <laughs> so then if we keep coming down this direction, it uh, looks like this is just kind of one big loop for the most part. Mixed in World War II, World War II stuff. So this is a... Uh, um, this is actually one of my one of my friends' builds uh, of Fury, the movie Fury, yeah. uh, the scene where the SS battalion comes and attacks the uh, the tank crew on the Fury. Yeah, well captured with the trees and everything. It's an abandoned Republic outpost. The rock work on that is really amazing, and as well as the the ground kind of uh, you know pavement type of build there is really nice. Built almost looks like completely snot, and then the way that tree. The way those leaves come down over top of each other looks really nice as well. And around here we've got quite a large build. So this is Knights of the Old Republic, uh, like a hangar build here. So we've got the ship in the middle, and then I love the greebling and all of that detail on the outer walls. So it's not just kind of your big blank gray walls like you see a lot of times. Yeah, the ship really, like the ship in the middle is obviously like you know the main focal point. But not only do you have the whole hangar in the background, you also have some side hallways with other stuff going on too. Um, that adds another layer of kind of, you know, what's going on. It's not just a, you know, a ship on a table. Exactly. Some other Star Wars vehicles that I'm not going to know the name of. <laughs> yeah, these, the, uh, the three-legged ones, I believe, are Octo, Octo droids um, from the Clone Wars and then Hailfire droids. Uh, Clone Wars is kind of now seeing a resurgence with the, um, the uh, they've basically announced the seventh season yeah. next spring. So hashtag Clone Wars saved. Um, it's people are starting to build it again. Mm -hmm. We've got kind of a, a build here. This is uh, Vardos, I think the the mock card says. So you, I love the the burnout black trees there. Are very nice. Yeah, and the kind of addition of the torn banner, the torn Imperial banner. Mm -hmm. And then around here, it looks like we may have got a little bit of a work in progress uh, build here. So I think the builder's still setting that up. I think that's definitely something Star Wars because it looks like a crab droid up top, <laughs> but uh, I'm not sure exactly. And then this is an excellent D-Day build here. I love this. Uh, you look at the, the detailing on top there is rare. A lot of times with the D-Day builds, the, the detailing of kind of the cliff and that type of thing isn't, isn't all that impressive. So that's pretty incredible. And then you've got the incorporation of the lights. This is great. Yeah, this was a, um, a group of my friends did this one. Uh, and the thing I really like, if you, you can look at the top of the hill, that's all done with the, the technique where you use the nets okay. and you put plates on top of them and you kind of set supports underneath to have them hold at different angles. So all those weird like humps and stuff you see up top above the rock work, um, that's all what that is. I've, I've tried it before. It doesn't work as well for <laughs> Pacific, but uh, that's a really nice added kind of level of landscaping that yeah. you, don't, you can't just get from layering plates on top of each other. I'm not a big fan of the 
uh, so much gore there on, on the on the water going to the land. I'm not sure all those wet red studs were necessary. I think some builders like to go a little over the top with all of the, all of the red blood on a build. I mean, but I mean, I, I I I'm just more for depicting the scene without all of the blood. That's kind yeah. of a personal opinion for me. Well, I mean, from World War II builder, you know, the uh, the kind of addition of that adds a sense of reality, especially D-Day. Um, you know, anyone who's seen the opening scene of Saving Private Ryan knows that's that's pretty pretty realistic. Maybe a little much, but it's pretty realistic. Yeah, and then uh, this is great. Bryce Dempsey, uh, this is Brick Built Replicas. You've probably seen his work before. Uh, some great stuff online of his. And this is his M1 Duran that he, he brought out here. So it's always it's always cool to see what he brings out to shows. Yeah, that is really cool. I like the, the life-size. You don't see life-size World War II stuff much. A lot of people will do, like, modern weapons. Uh, or like sci-fi weapons and things, but you don't see World War II because it's a lot more like sleek brown, more linear lines, stuff like that. This is also his build. This is a life-size stud shooter, so that's a pretty cool build. So a lot of people are going to be familiar with kind of the Star Wars and different sets that include those stud shooters, and he really blew that one up here, so, so I like that. I wonder if he built any studs that it can shoot. <laughs> that's true. You need some giant studs for it to shoot. And here's a little outpost build. And then it looks like, yeah, flip the mock. This is Curse of the Pharaohs here. Oh, from Assassin's Creed Origins. So that's what this is from. So I love the, the clean, detailed tiling and everything here. And even how you can, they stacked all the different yeah. pieces there to make that nice roof. Yeah, I, I really like those roofs. The way they stack kind of the, um, the edge plates, especially in scattered in some dark tan ones. And then those pyramid tile cheese slope pieces on top. And this build, I know, I think we've shown in, in past tour videos, the different shows. So the Ren Stronghold, those trees are, are always impressive to see. There's a lot. That's a very labor-intensive way of doing the trees there. Yeah, this is, that's actually a really nice uh, build. The house itself, I know, watching this show, it's um, levitating. Like it's uh, it's it's, okay. there's, it's cantilever basically, so yeah, it's, yeah. it's not on much. And he's really done a good job at recreating that kind of hovering box almost of the of the house and then next to that is the assault on ryloth uh, this is from the clone wars uh and this is the tree technique here is very different because there's like chains, chains. Yeah. yeah i don't know if i've ever seen that before it, uh, it looks pretty accurate i actually just watched that episode <laughs> okay. the other day so uh, it's kind of is that like a bark technique then is that what they're going for or? I guess the the trees on ryloth I, this scene is kind of when the when Obi-Wan Kenobi lands on the outskirts and attack, is trying to save the citizens. And the the, um, the trees have like a, they're like a darker birch almost. So they have a more rough kind of outer yeah, yeah. bark. Um, and that actually captured really well, especially mixing in some dark gray with the light gray ones. Adds another level of, um, you know, depth to it. That's a really unique technique. Yeah, I love that. And then next to that here, I think we've got another Star Wars build. No, no mock card there. I think that's, uh, that's a scene from Solo, a Star Wars okay. city, where they're uh, where they're trying to escape the, their labor planet. I still have never seen, haven't not seen the Star Wars or the Solo build yet. So or Solo movie, sorry. Good. You gotta you gotta go into it not expecting a Star Wars movie for it to be good. Gotcha. I'll go in with the right expectations then. We've got a lot of work in progress along here. And it looks like this build, I'm not. So uh, this is, I believe this is a, a Mustafar build that was, uh, has like all kinds of moving stuff. Um, the builder, it had, it, I believe it's supposed to have a very large something, structurally sound something on top um, that in travel was destroyed. Oh, okay. um, so they were, that was a very... <laughs> Long process uh, happened, I think, yesterday when they were trying to get it here. Um, so he's been frantically building over the, the past several days, and that looks fantastic for yeah. the amount he's been able to get. Hopefully he gets that finished up because it, it looks really amazing. And here's a long, thin Battle of Naboo, like that. And come around here, it's like we've got... Republic, Republic base, base on, yeah, Battle of Kashyyyk. So it's another take on that. That also became very popular with... Um, I guess the release of the battle pack, not only, and then the um, some of the other Clone Wars stuff later in the. Yeah, there are definitely a number of these Star Wars scenes, like Scarif and and this Kashyyyk and stuff that I feel like I've definitely seen a number of times at shows, and there it's it's kind of interesting to see everyone's different take on it. So at, at 
uh, you know, one, on, on the one hand, you're like, well, this has done, been done so many times, but on the other hand, it's kind of interesting to see how people do it. And I feel like crates kind of become the same thing. The people that go as far as to build the giant wall like ha they have over here, that adds a whole other level of depth that you see in the build because it's not just the, you know, the, the salt outside, it's the whole base, mm -hmm. and you can kind of get that feel for the entire battle as a whole from the movie. Well, that finishes out, I think, Rebel Lux. We'll head this direction then, and I think this will take us to some more, some more Bionicle, which I think we're going to see quite a bit more of before we're done here. But there are some impressive ones over here, so we definitely want to show these to you. Right off the bat, this, this green one with all the, there's like almost like rubber bands on there, I think, and then you've got the trans green pieces. That's pretty neat. Yeah, it's hard to kind of differentiate yeah. what's what on this table. They're so crammed together. I don't, I don't know. know. They might have run out of space for some of the Bionicle builds here, but yeah, if, if a little more space would definitely help uh, appreciate some of these builds some more. Yeah, it seems like some of the smaller themes this year, they ended up with um, a lot of extra tables. There's a lot of gaps okay. uh, in some of the other themes this year. So that may... And then this incredible build here with all of the different, uh, almost like tentacle pieces uh, coming off of that for this is just, just amazing. So Robert Day built this. Uh, I've, I love seeing this build. And a number of cool builds also by Robert. These are all by him. That's, yeah, the one, uh, the one with the face that's kind of has the teeth. <laughs> that's terrifying. And I think there's, is that a Galador or some kind of head in, there, in the hand there? Oh. That's even more that's terrifying. <laughs> Looks good, but don't get me wrong, it's, it's pretty creepy. <laughs> but you know, some, some builders can achieve that look well. <laughs> I love the wings on the butterfly there. It's like the plague mech. Use the Ninjago, almost looks like spinner pieces kind of as the in the center. And then around here we've got some great stuff on display. A bunch, I like this, this one here on the corner is really cool because it's uh, it's like, Coming down past the edge yeah. of the edge of the table here. Looks like they have some some Star Wars buildable figures kind of mixed in there, mm -hmm. and then some like takes on different different ones as well. I don't build Bionicles, so like this isn't my my forte, but like I, I recognize like the different color schemes and stuff. So mm -hmm. some of these are really nice. Yeah, and there's there's great stuff all along here. This this guy, the three-legged Walker build here, is pretty sweet. And then on a wheel he's got some treads around the waist that that looks kind of pretty cool keep coming around here and it looks like we've even got some customization happening here so if you want to explain real quick what, what's going on here uh, so I paint bionicle masks and uh, you know sell them during brick fair so I've been coming here for like five years now geez um, but yeah so I, I pretty much just paint these up yeah well, that's really impressive great work thank you and then over here, I love this yellow, the yellow and black uh, mix here is very nice. Yeah, with like the one-sided kind of wingspan over to the left, adds another, yeah, that's actually, that's pretty cool. The Mountain Dew, <laughs> Mr. Mountain Dew bot there is pretty sweet. <laughs> I wonder who, who, who drew the short straw to drink it. <laughs> and then over here. Yeah, so again, the, the black and yellow mixed colors there is, is great. Yeah, the, the white stag up top, that's actually, that looks a lot more like more system than it does Bionicle, mm -hmm. and that's really nice the way they have it posed up there. Yeah, I think all these background. all these builds on the black cloth here are Patrick Biggs, who's a very talented uh, builder and has, has done some great work over the years. So he's got some great stuff on display here. And then moving on down from that, I love this guy in the back uh, with that blue and orange and black uh, combinations. And then his shield and the like giant feet and everything going on there. Yeah, it's the the sand or the medium blue comments because you can see there's also some like silverish gray in the back, mm -hmm. and they have it layered like the black to the orange to the gray. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Lots more around here. Here's uh, the Warbound Hulk is really neat. So again, like you were saying, that mixing of a lot of system stuff here, but also some Bionicle type parts. Yeah, I still haven't seen that movie, but. I, and if you can get a shot on the back there, John, of the, the sword is also, is also really neat. A Deadpool, uh, Deadpool Bionicle there. 
and some other pretty recognizable Marvel and DC figures. The, this peacock next to that, I think, incorporates the, the teal pieces. Very impressive. Yeah, a Zelda one, and that's the Trill, 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 Trilligoth in the back there with all the, it looks like almost some, some Technic axles and then some smaller, uh, smaller, I'm not sure what those pieces are, but that looks, the way they have kind of the rib cage stacked up looks really cool. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, some more great builds too. I like this this character has her own mode of transportation there, which is pretty amazing. <laughs> and then the back to where we started here. So then we'll move back to the other direction there. So the other square of Bionicle. And finish this all out. As as I always mentioned in these tour videos, our goal is to show you as much as possible, everything possible with the time that we have and try not to skip any builds here. So this is another build by Alan T. Hickman, who I mentioned earlier. This is prime time, so this is his Transformers inspired build. He's got kind of the big head on the bottom there and then Optimus Prime on top. Yeah, it's really cool. I like the way he kind of incorporated the Optimus Prime head in a larger scale on the bottom of it to kind of complement the whole figure as itself. And we can just keep going to the left here then. So some really detailed, that's some like old Rock Raiders drills almost, I think, there on that one character. Yeah, the chrome ones. They uh, mm -hmm. adds another, that, that color, like that, you see those and you, you're instantly drawn to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's shinier than any, everything else. <laughs> It catches your eye. Are, th are these your builds here? Yeah, these are mine. I also have, I also have a, a Zodiac over there, okay. Zodiac builds, um, just like the 12 signs. Um, but these are all my, like, just my, like, lore-based kind of box. So, like, I have the great beings up here, uh, my two self-mocks, the two forms that he comes in. So, And then everybody else is just all different types. I have a uh, Gravanosaurus Rex over here in <laughs> Star Wars. I just got a set once, and I just decided to build a T-Rex out of him. So, yeah. and then I got a grunt down here. So you've created some fantastic characters, so thank you. And move down here. I like the way some, some builders kind of differentiate their builds by displaying them in kind of that stepped way, which is kind of nice so it's easier to see what's going on. Yeah, and I've noticed a lot um, on some of the ones that they have cloth, they, they, they kind of have a series of them and they're kind of stacked by like, either um, like rank or you know intensity or difficulty stuff like that that's um you can you can kind of see the different levels of how the builder kind of created them and then coming around the corner uh this is batman versus joker sea cow so you've got batman sea cow and the jokers pretty easy to tell which is which i don't think i've ever seen the use of the um almost looks like the the dimensions discs as a as a water source Okay, that's true. Yeah, I think I, you know I, I thought I had seen every type of Lego water, but I think that might be a new one. <laughs> Just a slight take on parts <laughs> dumping, yeah. And then some other nice builds next to that. This looks like a series of builds called Alice in No Land. Uh, so something has gone terribly wrong, uh, according to the mock card, and it certainly looks like that. This does not look like a fun land to be in. Uh, the way the uh, the way he has that rock work built up underneath almost looks like it's upside down mm -hmm. and kind of folds up to the landscaping above it. That you can like see down into those gaps is really, really cool. And the incorporation of all the dinosaurs uh, with the characters here and all those different pieces they've incorporated there is just really nice. Yeah, looks, like this is, looks like this is some steampunk stuff, steampunk kind of stuff with the walking creatures and old style, uh, you know, wooden and gold plated parts. The, the heavy assault boar right here. So it's, it says it's a British reconnaissance walker. <laughs> it does not look like a reconnaissance walker. <laughs> oh, I, th I think the smaller one is that is the reconnaissance walker. The other one is yeah. Okay, that makes more yeah, sense. Makes a little more sense because I feel like that's like your that's your main assault. Like <laughs> right. you know, come to destroy somebody. Kind of that's that kind of walk. AT AT of steampunk. <laughs> and some nice builds next to that. And come into into the heart of darkness here, some more steampunk type builds. I love the use of the old uh, diver helmet there. Yeah. And then on this corner, we've got 
a big kind of looks like a race area ready, but I, I don't see, I don't see anything uh, racing yet. So what this is uh, that you missed last year is that it's a diorama of a steampunk air race that's also a game. There's a full set of rules to, to describe the dynamics of a hovered bike moving and possibly bumping into each other and the wind blowing people. All kinds of dynamics all in this lovely set of rules that I made up. Gotcha. And see, so then you've got a bunch of the racers built over here. Yes. Along with uh, some other steampunk items like uh, my hat and my uh, Tesla gun, which I'll be using as uh, cosplay uh, props tomorrow. There you go. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. And then here to finish out this section for us, uh, I love this, this guy right here. Uh, the, all the different, the black and trans green, uh, and then like the, the red, is that almost like his tongue there? Kenu, Kenu Kaiju, it looks like. Okay. He uses, a, looks like almost an olive green canoe mm -hmm. as part of the <laughs> upper jaw. Yeah, there's so many great pieces integrated in there. And then here's <laughs> the, the, the school teacher uh, build there in the back. I like that, <laughs> Professor K. <laughs> Looks like almost has kind of the color scheme of like a green goblin almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's some <laughs> some very impressive builds right here. So I think that finishes out this section. So we'll keep moving down, make our way across the room, and see what we have here. This area it looks like there's a lot of open space at first here. I think sometimes they're using different builds and competitions. Yeah, I think this is the Mindstorms okay. area. So they have a. I don't know that this is as big of a theme as it used to be, mm -hmm. but so I think they have a lot more open space, not as many people brought. brought. So you can see some of the, the areas they use to compete with uh, their different stuff here. And then in addition uh, to the Mindstorms, you've got a very unique section here that I feel like is definitely worth uh, mentioning for a minute. So this is a big Galador display. And if you aren't familiar with Galador, uh, you should definitely look into it. We'll have a more in-depth video explaining what Galador is uh, up on the channel as well. Uh, but it was a theme from the early 2000s, and uh, Matthew Ewald, who you can see his photo right here, is actually at the show. He was one of the uh, actors on the, the original show that was based around kind of the Lego theme. And Galador is one of those infamous Lego themes from the early 2000s that did not do so well. So uh, this is the first time I've ever really seen this many Galador-inspired builds on display. Yeah, I, I don't think I ever had these as a kid, and I don't. I think this is the first time I've ever seen them as a sh uh, at a show. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's definitely a very different. I feel like they're going to be answering a lot of the same question of whether or not it's actually Lego tomorrow, because it doesn't look like you know the system that a lot of today's kids are used to seeing. Uh, it's more of like the the bigger figures that are a little more detailed as far as you know like. Um, the clothing and like things like that. It's almost more of like an action figure than what you typically think of as Lego. Uh, so it's a, a very unique theme from Lego from that perspective. So what we're looking at here actually are all mocks that people have created based on Galador. So you can see that this theme can be taken in a variety of directions uh, for all sorts of crazy uh, which is always always fun to look at. Yeah, they had a, uh, a big open thing yesterday uh, full of um, Galador parts, and I think one of my friends came over here, built one T posing, and had it set in the front of the table. I don't see it anymore, so I guess they took it took it apart. But it, it was funny while it was there. This one here with the, the hand holding the head—that's that's classic Galador-inspired build right there. Yeah, I guess these these are almost like remind me of Bionicles because they're you know the big built figures, but uh, a very very different take on uh, Bionicle and Lego as a as a whole. And then now we're back to some more of the, the Mindstorms builds here. And kind of technic and cool engineering contraptions. The Kenworth, the GT there, and a few more Mindstorms robots. Uh, and then we'll hit this section real quick over here. So this, I think, is a lot of Brick Mania builds, if I'm not mistaken. I think the, pretty much this whole layout actually is kind of Brick Mania, things, uh, things that they have built. Um, uh, this is the whole Brick Mania display. I, pretty, I think um, almost all of their design team members came down this year, and they brought all the stuff they designed. So, um, you know, John, Cody, Lando, they all have their, their, big, uh, their, their, their big stuff, and then all the smaller kits, some of them that they still have in stock, some of them that have, they've kind of phased out. 
um, you know, older ones that are just kind of nostalgic to the to Brickmania. Yeah, people who are Brickmania fans might recognize some of these. That that one we were showing earlier by John, the Aliens build, is really really neat. Uh, yeah, the the PT 109, the, uh, the you know the massive massive boat, and I don't know if that if that's a kit yet. But the giant the, train here. The, the German um, Gustav cannon, I believe is. Okay. I don't know what the mod card is, but that's. I'm pretty sure that's the real name, real, real, uh, real world name for is the, the Gustav Max cannon. Uh, I don't think that's a set yet. I hope it is because I kind of want one. And here's some more products on display, and I think this is some other more more recent stuff as well. Motorized AC-130. Uh, that's yeah. that's yeah. If they make that, that's ooh. <laughs> yeah. This thing's crazy with uh, the moving rotors and everything. Yeah, that's a that's a lot lot of pieces. And so then we can turn around here, and we'll just start right in with some more of the, the military builds. As I mentioned earlier, military is a big thing here at Brick Fair, so you'll notice quite a few military builds. So we'll start out here with alternate history, invasion of Japan. So I think this build probably imagines what would have happened if the U.S. had actually invaded Japan. Yeah, it kind of uses some of the, the different colors and techniques there. The roof using the minifig stand parts is, uh, is really cool as well as using the, um, the masonry bricks on their back, sign of laid into a bed that kind of gives them those lines mm -hmm. that adds depth to the roof. Mm -hmm. The build next to this that I really love, this is the Battle of Quezon, and I actually visited the, the actual battlefield of Quezon in Vietnam a few months ago when I was there on a trip, and uh, this is you know very accurate to that with the trenches that you can still see there today, and then you look out across the the green fields and you see the mountains where all of the the Vietnamese hit out uh, while they were attacking the, the fire base there at Quezon so I really love this build and how the, the builders incorporated the lights and everything in it is just magnificent yeah the uh, you can even see they have some caves in the back of the rock work too but mm -hmm. the amount of sand green plates that kind of go into this build that that's a compliment in of itself to source that much sand green is uh, and it really, I think the sand green works a lot well with the dark green they have for the grass elements because mm -hmm. it adds that kind of different level of like fields and things like that. So it's, um, that, that's very well put together. I've, I've watched that since Wednesday when he was starting to set it up. Yeah. And the UN military checkpoint and, and an aircraft carrier build, some planes and helicopters. This is a very nice uh, Kriegs Marine Super Battleship. Uh, I like the, the smooth look on the deck and then all the detail with the guns there. Yeah, and then the uh, the F-22 Raptor behind it, they have the one that's more Rainbow Warrior-ish, so you can kind of see how it was put together, and then they have the one in the uh, the realistic colors that kind of shows the overall what it's supposed to look like. And some more planes all around here. Uh, some landscapes with some, some tanks and things kind of setting up. Here's a, There's a man being uh, blown to bits with snakes and... Uh, explosions once again this this builder chose to go for more of the gory effect with that yeah d-day d-day plus six uh, based on the, the the way the troops look i'm assuming this u.s infantry in normandy uh, so d-day plus six it's probably be st lo st mary glee somewhere within the few first days of the invasion the main allied checkpoints then some smaller vignettes around the corner and then the Battle of Galicia, which uh, very nicely incorporated trenches there, and that landscaping is just just wonderful. Yeah, the use of the um, the way the the Russian tank looks on top of that kind of the squad car, as well as the way they've kind of layered down to the trenches as opposed to building them into it, uh, adds another adds um, a lot more layering, you know, kind of elevation change to it. And let's uh, I'll jump inside here real quick is this I think we have the builders for for this build here so you guys want to tell us what this is well, yeah we only have this side because like this guy is gone for home so he moved all his figures and tank away so originally it was supposed to have a KV tank here and all the Soviets charging up and that's why like if you look at their faces they're like caught in surprise and stuff but they got reinforcement coming up it's uh, 1944 to 1945 it's like uh, late war, so that's why you see like all the uniforms are, like messed up, and then tanks are, like special tanks. They're not ready for it. They're just sending what they have, and the Soviets just charging up with whatever they have. You know, humans by humans. You know. Gotcha. Thank you. Yeah. So unfortunately, half the build had to go, but I still I still like it. <laughs> and then here we've got another battle fought, and I think it, this took place in Belgium. So you see that like, nicely layered snow there, and once again some nice trench work. 
uh, looks like based on the mod card during the winter of 1944. So uh, mm -hmm. starting to get towards the close of the of the war. And then this is, uh, according to the mock card, the Battle of Kimki, if I'm pronouncing that right, which I might not be. Uh, this is the furthest the Germans were able to advance into Russia. So uh, you see the, the Russians, I think, flowing down kind of the mountainside here uh, as they uh, send an onslaught into the Germans. I like the funny detail, like Deadpool on the snowboard there. Yeah, I like the use of the, uh, the Adventure Time helmets almost as like snow covered with shock because mm. they add another... Um, some more to it. And then, you know, Homer Simpson charging with the Russians in there. <laughs> and then uh, Operation Overlord here. So we've got a, another beautiful D-Day build. Is this your build here? Uh, I wish, but okay. I'm not this good of a builder. But uh, I really, this guy did a really good job on it, and he really deserves a nomination. So good, good job to him. Couldn't agree more. Very, very beautiful. My friend, uh... uh I said my friend Sean did this build, so he he has all the. I think he I said he has over a hundred over hundred Marine or uh, U.S. Infantry on there. So the the amount of detail he's got worked into it between the hedgehogs and the, the way he's got the bunker system set up. You've got the room down low, and then the lights in the bunker. They add just so much more detail. And if we move down this direction, I've uh, got some. Let the World War II build there, and then here is the Siege of uh, Brimstone Hill. So this is more uh, like French and British, it looks like. Like that, and then Battle for Monte Cassino. Uh, so you can see uh, the rubble here is very well done. Is, it, is this you guys' build here? Yeah, no, I built all of this. Okay, awesome. You want to talk about this build real quick and how you achieved that rubble look? Oh, yeah, sure. So I started this build like two weeks ago. And I wanted to actually build something to showcase a vehicle, but I ran out of time, so I just kind of formed it into a minifigure, like, focused mock. So I started everything out on two bricks high, and I went in and I kind of, like, placed out where I wanted the craters to go. And then I went in with a filler brick and kind of just layered plates over top. And then once I got, like, just a big kind of, like, flat platform, I went and added all the little detail pieces. And it kind of, like, made it, smoothed it out, made it look cool. Give that realistic look. Thank you. We can move outside the bars now here. There we go. And keep going around here and check out some more of these builds. So we've got some more some more builders hard at work here. What is this you guys are working on? Um, um, we're working on a uh, mock for the Battle of the Bulls. And we had technical difficulty while, um, while uh, getting it here from our, from our house. And, um, and we're trying to put it back together. So, technical difficulty. Good luck with that. I'm sure you guys will do great. We'll look forward to seeing it finish. <laughs> Got some weapons and kind of a quad uh, rotor helicopter there. And then, are these your builds here? Okay. So, if you want to tell us about these. Um, so, this is just a um, freeform build that I um, created to try out more layering and like freeform techniques and... Um, so what I wanted to do was have this main island in the center with like the main focus, and then have smaller islands around that um, have more detail and stuff added to it. So um, I built this um, in two weeks before, and it's just free form and stuff. And like these ones I built upside down. And then when I was nearing completion, I decided I was going to raise it up yeah, to go. give it like like a floating island kind of technique. And um, I think it actually came out really nice. Yeah. yeah, that floating island technique is nice, and it creates all those little vignettes for the war scene, so thank you. And then I think that finishes out this section for us here, so we'll move, move up this way and hit this big city here. So I think it's the Charm City Lug. Yeah, that's Charm City Lug. Okay. So this, uh, if we want to start by this, this uh, tan and purple sure. skyscraper on the left, the uh, Wednesday when they were setting it up, so they have it split, at least what it looks like, they have it split into three floors. Um, there's a third one on the table that was up there, and uh, because of some stability stuff, they ended up taking it down <laughs> and putting that. I told uh, one of the guys over here that I bet him five bucks it was going to fall. <laughs> it was so, the guy was standing on the table, he was like shaking back and forth trying to put it up there. I was just waiting for something to happen. So they ended up taking that layer off, but it, I mean, it's still, you know, massive, so... 
it looks still real, it still looks just as good without the extra you know three and a half feet. Yeah, this whole city is incredible, but some, sometimes the imagination can get a little bit beyond the the bounds of reality. So you've got you've got to scale it back a little bit, but it's still still has some great buildings here. So you look at this this uh, sand green one here, and that concave uh, wall there is amazing. Yeah, and the way they kind of have the looks like almost like a landing platform. The way they have it rotated around, and the added detail of the tiles on top to make sure it's this circular and then another massive tower is this is the Grand Imperial Hotel uh, mix it says it represents a mix of the friends theme combined with a, the Star Wars City of Thieves so I guess yeah you can see okay, you can yeah. see the the, the mashup there uh, and the, the colors on that are just so unusual for a build of this size in a city layout like this yeah from what you can see at least the windows they look hollow and hollow builds that tall, they're usually not that structurally, you know, put together. But I mean, that one seems to be holding together pretty well, especially those those overhang balconies up top. Mm -hmm. uh, that's another, you know, added support that you have to watch out for. Yeah, and even on this side, there's uh, there's like ships coming out of the like a hangar bay at the top there. So that's just uh, an all-around impressive build. This one, though much smaller, has a ton of detail as well down here to the right as well. I love that uh, with like, the, the colors they incorporated there. It looks like the, the sand green, the gold, and the, uh, like the medium nougat. And the gold and the nougat, they almost blend together. Mm -hmm. And then here's a greatly expanded palace city. Uh, and they've got the leaves kind of going over the side of it, those palm trees type builds in the front. Yeah, I like the, the massive train they have going around here with all the the blue and the black cars, they're all like nice and shiny. Yeah, I don't even know how many cars there are in this blue, the blue train here. Three, six, <laughs> nine, twelve, twelve, looks like, twelve? I think it's twelve, I don't know, it's like ten o'clock, I can't count. <laughs> There's just a lot of train cars there. <laughs> and then a ninja zoo, so this is a, a twist on the typical Lego zoo by making it Ninjago themed, so you get the Ninjago city, some of these other Ninjago inspired sets, but then the the zoo is all custom here, which I think is, is really neat. Yeah, I like the, the, the way they did the spire. The thing I really like about Vietnamese um, architecture is the way they have kind of those overhang, but almost pointed, kind of like dip-shaped mm -hmm. of the overhang, um, like the canopies or the... Yeah, yeah, and those pagoda-type structures yeah. are very impressive architecturally. Uh, and then here is a train track around a giant blue crab. Maryland blue crab, maybe, because Charm City... I'm, Pretty sure Charm City looks from Maryland, so Maryland okay. blue crab, I think. We'll go with that because <laughs> it must mean something. <laughs> it has some some hidden meaning. <laughs> oh, and then this uh, this Friends airship is incredible with well, the way they incorporated the the hot air balloon pieces there. Uh, There's a lot of the the fairy tale pieces, the mm -hmm. the purples and the, the way those leaves, uh, like the dark purple and the medium medium purple. I guess it's more elves than Friends now that I look at it. Yeah. And then, Diving yes, then right here, what, are, what, what do we have here? Uh, Diagon Alley. Oh, okay. this is a fantasy tree. <laughs> yeah, you don't. I love have, yes. this, is, this is still a work in progress then. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> we'll, we'll stop by for a more in-depth video later. Yeah, this is, this is Diagon Alley, and there's all the different details in here, so you can see all the different buildings the different uh, Harry Potter characters. Yeah, I think she said that all the buildings are fully furnished interiors, which is for that many buildings to have fully, like fully detail, and based on the amount of detail they have outside, the amount of detail that would be inside on all these buildings, that's that's insane. Mm -hmm. We will definitely stop by for a more in-depth uh, video with the builder, because it uh, looks like there's a lot to show there. So we'll head this direction then, and check out what we have on this display. It's like we've got some work in progress builds, maybe some big minifig builds there. You even got like the the mouse click and the Facebook like button and everything. And then some really great characters from Nathaniel Shields uh, it incorporates the the base the bases kind of with the character. Yeah, I like really like these these trans clear swords. Those look really because the way you kind of the light reflects off mm -hmm. of them it makes them almost look chrome or silver. And then down here, these I think are just so unique builds. These are such a cool idea. So this is uh, Duplo. I think I guess the one on the right would be Duplo. The one on the left, uh, I'm not sure exactly what you would call that giant 
sort of crocodile piece, but it's incorporated like normal Lego bricks with these larger builds. It looks like the, the studs on the front of it look like it's Duplo, but the, okay. the system they have in the back, that almost looks like micro scale, kind of built down into mm -hmm. it. So it looks like it, there's some stair, tile stairs that go down and maybe go down into like a, some cavern inside yeah. of this. So it's like micro scale building and, uh, you know, brought into Duplo exactly, which is really unique. Yeah, this looks like a lot of micro scale stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, I really like what they did with the sailboats here, using those kind of saber pieces inside of jumpers to get the, the sails in all the different colors. That's what always strikes me about micro scale building is how it just comes down to one or two pieces to create yeah. something like a, like a sailboat. Uh, and so that's what always is so impressive is when you can use those pieces in just the right way. Yeah. The, uh, the, the, I like looking at the micro scale just because like the, the amount of different pieces they use to capture certain things. You know, when you're building minifig scale, there's a lot of things you wouldn't think to use for certain pieces because they're, you know, too small. But like using the, um, the the Lego Racer hubcaps as almost looks like AC units or something like that on top of the, um, I'm not sure which building that is, but the, uh, the the post office maybe or the auto dealership. Um, that actually that adds even more layers of details that a lot of these micro scale buildings have. And here we've got some some vignettes moving down more this direction. Uh, so there's like a Segway tour, camp, camping in New Mexico. <laughs> it's, you never know what will happen when you go out in the d desert to camp. Yeah, it looks like some just kind of different, different vignettes of all kinds of different things. Mm -hmm. Obviously being, you know, military builder on the stands, that's the, the Vietnam tunnel system. No, one. definitely. That caught my eye as well. Yeah. <laughs> and some of these, uh, looks like the different ones are signed and things, so that's pretty cool. built uh, leg lamp. Yes, the leg lamp. This is a true work of art right here. Uh, this is this is really amazing. I love the, it's all it's all brick built too. The, the netting and everything, the Lego chains, I, it's, it's all brick built. And they got lights in there, which is even cooler. It actually works. Yeah. And here's some different, gyroscopes. yeah, gyroscopes, mechanical builds. This like one. The, the one with the trans blue mm -hmm. snakes inside. Because instead of like the the green seaweed pieces, it's they're almost S curved. So when you fold them in, they probably there's probably a very specific way that that fits fits together. And then down here is a series of I think these are habitat builds. So uh, these are somewhat common at conventions. You'll see some uh, builder or group of builders take a bunch of minifigs and make little habitats for them and display them all in one giant wall like this. And so you can pick out all your kind of favorite details and everything in there. Yeah, I know I've seen um, like the, the ones where they use the actual minifig series, but it looks like these are a lot of just, you know, iconic scenes or like custom minifigures. Obviously, you know, the one, the, the Capitals locker room rock the red with the, uh, with the Stanley Cup is, is <laughs> that's the one I like the most. You're, Being, you're drawn uh, to that, there yeah. you go. I like the, the disco Batman down here in the upper right corner. Oh, it's even yeah. got the spinning pieces there. Looks like there's a light in the corner that kind of shines on it, mm -hmm. and it, the light bounces off. The, it looks like Batman almost has some kind of chrome-ish cape mm -hmm. um, that the light reflects off of as it's as it's rotating. Yeah, being able to add power functions and things into into builds those small is uh, is really nice, especially something like that where they can incorporate both the lights and the disco ball adds you know just more fun to it. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure, it gives so much to look at, especially if the public's walking by and, and can check it all out. Spinning or lighting up, and you know it's always like a eye catcher or a, a draw. And then here's a, a beautiful Oz build. Uh, so this is, you know, once again we talked about kind of brick built lettering there. You see with the, the Oz, the rainbow, tiny lights incorporated for the small Emerald City there. So just so many details. The micro scale tornado lifting the house up over there. That's power function. And the, uh, the I like that the the use of the um, the cone pieces as trees at different intervals on top of the plates to kind of you know, change elevation heights between all the forests, make them more, look more natural. Mm -hmm. And so then here's just a bit of uh, the like mini land scale uh, convention layout here. And then if finished with that area, we'll move around here. So I think this is mostly castle, this, this square that we're coming up on. So this first one we come to is really amazing, both because there's this great build on top as well as the caverns underneath here that have all sorts of details. Yeah, the, the cavern's really cool. And one thing I think is really interesting, up on top, he has the, the clear panels in the wall 
full of the the one by one round tiles. I'm I'm guessing almost to signify like natural cobblestone. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's that's a really interesting kind of I like that people are taking the idea of part stumping and that we used to use for water a lot in World War II stuff and anything that required water um, and that have kind of taken that to different levels and done stuff like that. It really has that extra level of detail. And then Nexo World, so I know Nexo Knights has been a, a controversial theme, but uh, there have been some, some great builds uh, over the last few years that people have used Nexo Knights for, so it is fun to see how that inspires builders. This is a day at the arena, so uh, did you build this here? Yes, I did. Okay, you want to tell us about what's going on here? All right. Um, so basically what we have is we have a number of combatants that are currently fighting against um, a bunch of enemies that have been gathered out in the wild. Um, we have ten heroes versus a whole slew of combatants from warlocks and their undead minions to his iron golem and his marauders that he brought alongside him. But it was just meant to be a fun, really big battle that was made just because I really wanted to. <laughs> And there's really no better reason than that. So this is awesome. I love all the minifigs you incorporated here. Do you have a, a few favorite minifigs you want to point out or fun ones that you like to include? Um, yeah, so I've got a couple of uh, really cool minifigs that were uh, requested by a bunch of friends of mine on a forum. Uh, most of them are combatants, but those that are very special, you'll see in, this, in the very front row of the audience, uh, most of those guys were not original ideas. They were recommendations and parts lists that were put together by other people online. So just to kind of show their, show some, you know, favor towards them, went ahead and built them and added them to the build. Yeah, so it's almost crowdsourcing as well, and you're getting that input. So that, that's a really neat idea. Thank you. Thank you. And then move across here, and we've got this giant castle build we've uh, i believe featured this in a build or in a video with the the builder in the past so you can get a more detailed look at that if you want but there's so many neat details with the lava and then the different fighting going on all the different characters yeah and you can also if you look uh i like that it, this year it's on a corner because i remember last year for castle stuff they were all uh over on the wall but being here you can kind of see it from multiple different uh, like you know points of view so you can see like the, the lava flowing in the back up at the top that kind of falls down into the, the lake at the bottom. And also that um, if you look at it closely, you can realize that that, that main centerpiece, um, that's not, you know, that's straight, that's at, a, um, at an angle. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that makes it even more difficult. Here is a build that very much a work in progress still, but it looks like there's some some great foundation there. We'll see if that gets finished up over the next couple days. Got a nice little medieval scene there. And then uh, Ava's Stone Embassy. So this is maybe like a not sort of an underwater world or a water world. Yeah, some, something like that. Based on you can see like the, the different watercrafts and stuff. I really like the, the medium azure mixed with like the sand blue and the dark blue. And the, you know, like the navy blue, all the all the shades kind of melded together. Not even in the water, but like in some of these other these rooms and things where the the roof pieces are all made up of like the sand blue and the medium blue. Mm -hmm. Is uh, it adds like a a pop of color that you don't see very much, especially in castle builds. You know, castles usually gray and black and um, you know green and tan as like far as landscaping goes. So it's really nice to see something different. Next to that, I, the mock card on this is great. It's just, all it says is, he who has the best toys wins. And it's just this excellent Roman layout here uh, with, I think, some definitely some third-party uh, pieces in there, maybe Brick Warriors uh, and some other companies incorporated into there. Yeah, I really like the, uh, the trebuchet. That, uh, I don't know if it works or not, but it looks really cool. <laughs> and this is Breath of the Wild, I think based on the, the Zelda and Link game, so uh, the landscaping here is just exquisite. You look at all the, I mean, the, the, the wall, the way that wall is falling down and everything, that's just amazing. And the way the, the castle wall is almost built into the rock work, mm -hmm. not as like the rock work's built around the wall, um, mo like a lot more on that side, but the fact that this kind of keeps going past the muck um, is, adds that just the depth to it. You know, you, from the, the, um, you know, the, the public side, you see it from 
one, maybe two angles, whereas when you have it set at an angle and you have stuff that goes further, you, you can kind of use your imagination to kind of keep going past what you can see. So. And then here is a, a big, long layout by Martin Harris, who we featured, I don't even know how many of his builds, just a stalwart builder here at the Brick Fair shows. He just does all sorts of incredible work. You never know what he's going to show up with next. And so this is a whole long elves uh, build uh, and just so many neat details in here and the way he's incorporated the, the Blue River uh, with kind of that upside down roof work. Yeah, I really like the, the buildings especially, the way they have the the roof on that big one set up as well as some of the, the arches he uses, whereas you know the, the main entrance is like three, four bricks out from the main door, but he kind of slowly works into the door using different size arches and techniques to, to build as well as some flex tubing. And here's a, a very, so almost sort of cartoon look because it's so smooth, which is, which is uh, very unusual for castle builds. They usually go for the much more realistic uh, approach, but I like sort of the, the Robin Hood forest men look there. It does real as, as small as it is, the, um, the, the way the castle walls kind of cut off and you got like the front of the castle, mm -hmm. um, it definitely, the, the smoothness kind of adds like a, not, not cartoonish, but more like animated sort mm -hmm. of, um, that you usually don't see in Lego. Usually, um, you know, there's, it's either really smooth or it looks like really rugged, so. Yeah. See that kind of carried on in this, this is maybe the, the forest men's hideout there along the river. And then this mock depicts the battle scene in Lord of the Rings, so some great characters there. This is an absolutely amazing castle build right here, and I just love this so much. This was done by Nathaniel Shields. From the base, which is kind of the brick bending round base, you've got the kind of black uh, fence there, the brick, brick bending fence. Uh, then all the way to the spire and everything, all the different pieces he incorporated is just amazing. Yeah, the, the, I think the one thing that stands out to me the most would be the, uh, the use of the, the Coruscant micro mm -hmm. planet um, pieces used as the main like domes mm -hmm. um, on some of the smaller towers, uh, as well as, like you said, the, the flex tubing that kind of has like the droid arms and the wrenches that builds that winding kind of, not even the railing but it almost using that kind of outlines where the walkway is so it's not as much having to build that walkway as you have the kind of you should show where it is yeah exactly and the the rock work and everything is just I love that so much there's a nice clean looking fort build there with the soldiers keeping a close eye on the water and then a big castle layout with all different elements incorporated you got the forest men's hideout over here it almost looks like a like a recolored kind of different take on the uh, the endor tree yeah, village yeah, yeah. set that came out um, kind of recolored and redone to add like that the whole forest man castle era kind of color scheme as well as the, some of the way they had like the torches and the staircases and things like that and then Lance's lava mine, so you've got some lava monsters there. Then the fortified chapel looks very Nexo Knights inspired chapel, which is not something you see very often. Trans clear, the trans clear windows with all the different shades of um, green, blue, clear, it looks like they almost have some smoke in there too, um, is really cool, especially inside of the walls that are already the navy blue. So the, the dark colors mixed with the dark colors that kind of move into the light colors. Dice tower there. A uh, nice storm guard sword. And then another great tree, kind of treehouse build. Yeah, the, the way they have those built on there uh, and then have like the, the rest of the elevation of the tree that kind of is built out of them is, uh, is really cool, especially with the, the way they have, I'm not exactly sure how they built the trunks, but. Um, building the trunks to support that much on top of you know adding the house in the middle of it you got to be able to support that and the tree above it and the tree below it yeah it looks like some precarious connections sometimes in there but it turns out nice and and we'll move up that finishes out that that part of the castle display for us I think if we come back here we've got some more uh, military builds yeah. yeah so we'll just start in right here uh, looks like we've got some some builders hard at work here so uh, what, what are you working on here? So this is Tarawa Atoll, uh, basically a, a marine invasion of a Japanese island. 
And um, yeah, we're basically placing the figures right now, and uh, hopefully we'll have it done in like 20 or something minutes, just so we can take pictures and upload it to the Brick Fair website. Okay, perfect. Well, best of luck. It lo looks looking good. <laughs> And then a line of great vehicles here. This is smaller scale than you see a lot of a lot of military vehicles done in. Yeah, I talked to the builder. Um, I'm not sure the ones on the left and the right, but these ones in the middle here. Um, there, he has. I don't know if it's a, it's a game or like some custom thing, but he has different factions of um, vehicles imagined. Where um, there's like certain certain vehicles go with certain factions. Um, I don't remember exactly how he was about it, but. Uh, like some of these, these uh, some of these smaller vehicles, um, he actually uses these um, the old buildable battle droids from like way early 2000s. They have a long piece in them that you can kind of see if you come down to the side of some of these smaller vehicles. The um, those longer Technic pieces and the the Brick Mania track links, track links, they just slide onto it, okay. so they're not actually connected, but it kind of gives those the the pins and the lines that would be acquainted with like the wheels and the axles and. Um, stuff like that. Yeah. And then some Pacific Marines here. Uh, something I like about this is when builders kind of build that that base around there or the frame around their build. I think is pretty neat. Yeah. One thing that um, I I do for basically for mostly the public sake that I think a lot of um, especially Pacific builders they kind of pass over is the fact that um, a lot of us use the medic helmets, mm -hmm. um, which is theoretically inaccurate so during the pacific the um the the kind of courtesy not to shoot medics wasn't really a thing um so most medics went in unmarked um, no armbands no helmets they had plain helmets just like every other marine that way there was no they wouldn't be targeting them or anything like that they were just amongst the rest of the ranks um so yeah, that's some great insight thank you that's that's interesting to know and here's some more military vehicles. And I love this, this build in the back here. It says, uh, make Flickr great again. <laughs> That's pretty great. Uh, so it looks like there's just kind of chaos and almost post-apocalypse post going on there. Yeah, the, uh, the, the one thing that everyone has like been, is the, is the shopping cart on top of the building, the way they have the shopping cart built mm -hmm. with the, the sideways, almost um, latticed window pieces mm -hmm. in between grill tiles. And I think that uh, that's definitely a movement we can all get behind, yeah. definitely. <laughs> and, and if we come around here, we've got a number of, of plane builds. And I think we have uh, the, the builder right here with us as well. So do you mind coming out real quick and just uh, giving us a quick overview of what we have? So you just want to take us down the line real quick and explain what these are? All right, so my name is Yasser, and uh, here are my airplane mocks. So here is the Panavia Tornado. It's a uh, European multi-role fighter aircraft, and this is particular version is used by the, the Royal Air Force. Mm -hmm. uh, and here is a Russian bomber. It's called the Tu-95 Bear, very famous. Uh, you know, it, this model is like four feet long. It has like a bunch of working features. Uh, it has pretty interesting color scheme, I guess. Um, here is the FJ-4B Fury. It's a United States Navy fighter, very old. Uh, I built a lot of figures to go along with it, like to, you know, to depict it in its natural habitat with, uh, in, with the U.S. Navy. Mm -hmm. And here is a World War II German uh, Comet, the ME-163 Comet. It was the first and only operational rocket fighter in the entire history of the world. And this, got, this model got nominated for Best Aircraft here at Brick Fair. So I'm very happy about that. There you go. Congratulations. Thank you, Yasser. And for people watching the video, we featured a number of Yasser's builds in past years from the show. So make sure you check those out on the rest of the channel. So thank you. And then I think we come to a build that might be a little bit familiar <laughs> to you, Caden, if you want to talk about this. Yeah, so uh, this is my build of the, um, it's still the Battle of Pellets, we've been doing it for the past few years. Mm -hmm. um, this one in particular, and we can go into some more depth, um, is the, the Fifth Marines. Uh, this is D-Day, close to about 11 a.m. Uh, after they had landed. This would be the the Fifth Marines pushing kind of the outskirts of the uh, the right flank of the airfield. So, um, but uh, I did all kinds of custom painting. Um, that uh, you, you can look at my cardboard on the table back here. I got covered. In, yeah, you can see your workspace there. Hard at work the past couple of days painting stuff. 
Um, all of the all the marine helmets that had the camouflage, those were all painted by me. Uh, over can, the past can you years. grab one and give a closer up shot, or John? Because I, I I'm really impressed with what the work you're able to do here and, and give that realistic look. They were uh, they were black when I started them, and then I painted them tan, let that dry, and then paint on the camouflage. And some of them I actually went back and stroked off some of the tan. So like this one has a, a black streak, um, and because these weren't like the helmets themselves, they were helmet covers. Um, so by doing that, you kind of have the helmet underneath and then like a tear in the helmet cover. So there's a couple of them that have some more rugged ones. There's a couple of them that have some, some cleaner ones. Um, but they're all, all varied. And all the camo patterns are different because I was just randomly kind of plopping on the different colors. Um, I, I made a Walmart run for paint yesterday, so it <laughs> had all kinds of stuff. But yeah, we can, uh, we can talk about that. Yeah. I've got some battle maps and some other reference stuff for people to look at for the public days tomorrow. So. I'm glad you could bring that out to the show. It's, it's definitely impressive. So then if we move, to, move around the corner here, uh, let's see what else we have. Yeah, this, is a, this is another um, build of Peleliu by a, a, a nice young man I met, um, I guess, Wednesday. Okay. Um, who we've kind of been conversing back and forth a little bit. So he's, he's got kind of the different different take on it but it's uh it's still really really nice the way especially uh he, i believe he's a, he's either 11 or 12 uh and the amount of layering he's got between with all the different plates and the way he has the beach built up um is really really cool mm -hmm. and next to that is some great snow landscaping as well and then move around this direction this one was just set up um a few hours ago um i don't know exactly german Ambush, so it's a German bunker ambush. I don't think this is like an actual like specific battle, but it's a World War II kind of U.S. infantry versus the German Wehrmacht um, somewhere in somewhere in Europe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's close enough. <laughs> and then the second battle of Fallujah, so becoming a little more modern here. You don't you don't quite see. Uh, you know, v real modern or more modern builds like this. Seems like most builders kind of stop at maybe Vietnam War and that's about it. Yeah, this builder, um, he's 12 and the, uh, the build he had last year, it wasn't, you know, up to, up to this kind of standard. And when he came back this year uh, with this and I saw him set and I was like, there's no way that's the same kid. <laughs> he, he's improved so much. His Humvees are fantastic. Like the, I, I don't build a lot of modern, so I don't know from like that point of perspective, but the way he has the, um, and you can see the white ones he has off to the left here. I believe those are his as well. That he has the the um, the Humvees scaled down, so they're they're still like almost minifig scale, but they're at a smaller than you know what like Brickmania mm -hmm. might consider minifig mm -hmm. scale. Uh, uses less parts, but it uses a lot more smaller pieces to kind of get like the the smaller details in them. But they're still they still fit minifigs and they look right. So. And that's a good point you made about one of, one of the really neat things about coming to these shows over the years is seeing how those builders improve and, you know, seeing a builder come for three, four, five years and you can you can see if they bring a similar build, how, how they've improved and expanded on that. So that's always a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, for those of you, for any of the, you know, people who've been watching uh, my interviews, my, the, the first year here, the infamous voice crack video, <laughs> uh, but the, uh, the first mock I did, you know, it was relatively flat. It was, you know, there weren't a whole lot of minifigs. All the minifigs were poorly painted and decaled. And, you know, I've kind of moved away from that and gone towards, you know, try to make it more detailed, um, gotten better at custom painting and, uh, started using a different kind of paint that's, it's more of a modeling paint. So it's, it, uh, it fits on them well. Uh, this one. Uh, this was, I believe this was a collab between either two friends, two brothers, I'm not sure. This is World War I, um, British and French kind of crossing into, crossing no man's land uh, towards a German uh, outpost. I know, um, so the, the um, pillbox is a, is a brick mania kit. Um, and the, the way they actually advertised that was on something kind of like this. They had one of these built. And I think that's why they, they kind of went for that. Um, I saw them walk, working on the trenches too. They actually have a lot of eyelid bricks um, and headlight bricks inside of them that you can that they have the plates run on and they add they layer on top of them kind of coming out instead of coming up um, so they're using the snot techniques to build the sides of the sides of the trenches is yeah. really really cool that's how they get that that does not on top kind of sideways building so that's good to know yeah and those world war one builds are all I always love that I feel like world war one is very much underrepresented uh, in, in Lego building so I, I would love to see a like a really big massive World War One diorama done some someday. Yeah, I think a lot of the the reason World War One isn't done a whole lot is just because the since the U.S. wasn't 
involved a whole lot until more of the end of the war. You know, the reason World War II is so popular is because the U.S. was involved almost right from the start. So it's it's more common than World War One. But a lot of people, especially the people that um, favor like the the British soldiers, the people, the people who like the British soldiers and things from you know Citizen Brick or custom ones or whatever, that um, a lot of those those kinds of people tend to build the, the World War One stuff. Yeah, so there, there are some, some pretty impressive ones we run across occasionally. There's a little Vietnam build there. And then it looks like we got another German World War II. I like this. That's, uh, it doesn't have all the, the action of a lot of scenes you see. It's just kind of that still scene with the frozen river, the trench. I, I kind of like that. I actually, I really like these kinds of builds just because it, it highlights more of the, the intensified detail that goes into them. Especially since, um, like this one in particular, they have the trench and the, the covered pillbox, machine gun nest, and the way they have those trees built up. You know, if, if it's a full battle scene, you're, you're more looking at the battle scene than you are looking at stuff like that, like the smaller, smaller pinpoint details. And I think that finishes out this military section for us, so we'll move on here <coughs> to some more military uh, and we'll see what kind of different builds this has to offer but first off there's a massive amount of planes here and these are done by it looks like a number of different builders uh, some really impressive ones yeah, there's, a, there's a large group of guys um, that build mostly aircrafts or military stuff and they always bring tons of aircrafts they have a Vietnam kind of collaboration at the other side um, that we'll take a look at but a lot of these planes are fantastic and some of them the amount of, like the some very weird connections that you don't see a lot that kind of pinpoint certain angles on certain planes uh, especially older planes like the um, the Mahler the uh, Martin AM1 Alt Mahler uh, and then like some of the smaller stuff the the World War II planes especially since the they were so linear with the you know the Zeros the Mustangs Hellcats um, planes like that they all had really kind of weird wing designs like that and it's really hard to build at such a small scale so. mm -hmm. And then I know John was showing this briefly earlier, but I wanna I wanna give a shout out to to Einan. That's his username online, a builder who came all the way from Portugal and had displayed some some of these great planes in this big uh, Hydra heavy tank, which we actually featured in a, a video when we were at the show in Portugal last year. So uh, you can check that out if you want to see more in-depth video. But uh, it was awesome that he could make it all the way from Portugal over to the show here. Apparently, it's motorized because he was driving it around on the mm -hmm. floor earlier, which I didn't know. <laughs> I saw it on the table yesterday, and it looked like just a big tank. And he had it driving around on the floor over by my mock. I was like, oh, that thing moves. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really, really impressive. Then here we get into a giant uh, G.I. Joe layout. And so this is done by uh, Magnus Loglo. And this has been consistent for a number of years. You can see the builder right there in the background. So uh, Magnus, uh, doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm awesome. <laughs> awesome. So if you want to give us an overview of what's kind of happened on the layout this year? Yeah, this is... Um G.I. Joe, another G.I. Joe battle. I've set up the G.I. Joes and some Dreadnoughts, but most of the Cobras are, I'm, I'll be setting up in the next hour. Okay. Um, the, I've got a bunch of vehicles, and this, uh, the thing over here is the, uh, the Cobra uh, Terror Drone, which is the big new thing that I built this year. It looks very big and new and impressive. Thank you. Can, 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 do you have like a minute? Can I show yeah, you? Yeah, a, a, yeah, I would love to see in there. It does that. Okay. And then also, let's see if this works. I hope this works. Oh, come on, work. There we go. Oh, yeah. I always worry a little. Is it going to work or is it not going to work? See, because it's... I, maybe I need to recharge the batteries, but it's, 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 uh, it's opening up here. There we go. Yes. Wow, and that's amazing. Did, did it take you a while to get that mechanism figured out to be able to get that to all work like that? It took me a little tinkering, yeah. Okay. The whole thing took me about a half year to build. Yeah. And this is the largest non-modular thing I've ever built ever. Okay. So it's, it's pretty exciting. It's got a full interior. I, just a real quick interior example. I've got... That's what the... Uh, you can look in there and it's got... Uh, a garage type area and then it's got two floors and everything else wow. so yeah <laughs> yeah well thanks for bringing that out this year it's a great addition to the layout so i'm so glad you were able to do that oh i'm so glad you stopped by for sure yeah. thank you enjoy the rest of the show Take care, man.
And then here is a Vietnam Veterans Memorial. So we've shown this uh, also in a, in a video in the past, which I definitely recommend you to check that out and get the, the builder's point of view because it's, it's a really great build here and hearing from the builder is, is really impressive. Yeah, it kind of seems like there's, every theme has like certain things that kind of see resurgence. Uh, like, you know, World War II is like the, the huge thing and now Vietnam's starting to come back a lot more. Um, and then, you know, get the same thing with Star Wars, mm -hmm. you know, you get the, the new battles every, you know, however many years a movie comes out. <laughs> exactly. Um, so this, I believe, I think this whole table or most of this yes. table back here is the, is the Vietnam collaboration or parts of it um, where they're either highlighting a vehicle or have a vehicle in some, some landscaping like the, the uh, marine patrol boat back there um, in the kind of like the, the dark smoke kind of river using some of the cheese slopes as the wake behind the boat and in front of the boat as well as the, the tree landscaping behind it is really nice. That's a build by Ralph Salvelsberg who's just incredibly talented and we featured some of his stuff in the past. Uh, seeing his work is always a treat. What, it, what he's able to do is just amazing. I love this build up here. This, appeal, this appeals to both the military historian and the archaeologist in me here. So this is a MIA dig, so a missing in action dig. And these are, are groups of people who go over to Vietnam and will do these archaeology type digs to, to find remains and artifacts and things left over from the war. So I love this. It's, it's something you don't typically think about in relation to the Vietnam War, uh, but some, some stuff still going on today. Yeah, I remember um, I, I do stuff uh, similar to that. We actually me and uh, some family we tour Civil War battlefields or mm -hmm. used to and um, I want to say it was Manassas uh, it was either Manassas or Antietam um, that coming we were walking through these woods and we found um, on the surface I don't know if it had been because it was on a hill so it could have been rained out or something but it was a it looked like what have, what would have been a um, trigger guard of a, of a, a musket mm -hmm. wow yeah you never know what you're going to find going to those battlefields there's so much still left there and then in the back there, I let the Coochie Tunnels build, so you can see some of the diagrams, how those were laid out. Uh, when I was in Vietnam, I actually crawled through some of those, and it's just insane to imagine people living down there and, and making that their home for, for years on end as they, as they were fighting the war, so it's just incredible. Well, um, a lot of these, I feel like a lot of these guys, they build a lot of aircraft, so they kind of signify that. The, uh, the AC, I believe, I think, I'm not exactly sure exactly what plane that is, Suspended. It's another one of Yasser's planes. I think it's the the Douglas AC-47 is what the mock card says. Yeah, so uh, that's another one of Yasser's planes, and he um, he had that. I believe it was the same plane last year in dark gray um, that he used for the the Bastone Bastone okay. mock Caesar Bastone mock, and his uh, his landscaping um, the, uh, the the single singular Viet Cong minifigure on there uh, the the AK he's holding I hand painted for him because he Wednesday he comes up he's like you got an AK. Yeah? <laughs> it's like, you want to paint it? I was like, sure. What do you need it for? And he's like, well, the Vietnam collaboration. So he, he set that up mm -hmm. on, uh, with, the, with the rest of them. They had to move them around. There was some, some space issues. They had to get a second row of tables in here. So. Mm -hmm. Another thing I want to point out here, and I think this is, this is really neat, is that they represented all sides of the conflict. So you know, we see the, the American vehicles, and they've got uh, different Vietnamese uh, like missile launchers uh, and, and builds like that. So I love that diversity of builds within this collab here. I, th I think this is this is just amazing to walk you know, walk around and see all these. Yeah, especially like kind of you mix the uh, since a lot of these you know these guys do build land, the the, um, the aircrafts. It's nice to see you know some of them kind of going outside that and building like APCs and tanks and things. And I like the one in the back, the uh, nominated best military diorama with the the fishing boat. Or the the boat, and then all the landscaping that kind of goes in the background. Mm -hmm. I really like those those smaller ones, especially the the palm trees built with the flower, the one by one flower elements that oh, have yeah, those yeah. the stems on them. Is that textured yeah. trunk almost? Yeah, good catch there. These these F twenty F eighteen plane F twenty something. I don't <laughs> I know. Think it's it's the F fourteen and the F eighteen. There we go. That's what the mock cards say. So the the, the huge the F eighteen or F F fourteen is Ralph's. Yeah. Uh, again, massive, very, very uh, impressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this is one of the biggest builds he's ever brought over uh, here to Brick Fair. So, seeing his work is definitely amazing. And we've got a uh, few plane builds here by Corvin, and he's got some awesome builds on display here. I love the the minifigs he's incorporated in here and how he's made the whole scene. Yeah. And like I, like I was saying over by the Vietnam, the, the guys who bring. You know, it, it's cool. You, you bring all the tanks and you set them up, and you can see all the different tanks. But the the guys who take it a little bit farther, and they add that landscaping to highlight said specific tank. Uh, and the way they the this one the the CB90 Mark 
five, I believe. Um, the the way so the the way it's built up as far as the water, they have different colored plates underneath, and then they put the tiles on top of it. So they have almost looks like a white underneath closer to the shore so you get that lighter kind of green color and then the the darker plates out near out in the farther out so it gives you the different like you know shore to shore to deep the depth levels mm -hmm. of the of the water yeah yeah and they can fit all so, so much detail like that into a relatively small build there and it, it just always looks very impressive and then nominated for best watercraft here i think we've got the builder right behind it so you want to tell us what we have here yeah, it's uh, the Mark V command boat. It's used by Navy Special Warfare. Um, it's a pretty awesome little boat. Not little, it's actually really big. So it was a pain to build, but I'm happy it actually got finished in time. Yeah, so. and it turned out great and you got nominated, so thank you so much. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. We've got a builder still hard at work on this layout. What, what is this? Hi, so my name is Christian Calgill, and this is a reactive contact scene where I've got the classic good versus evil insurgents pushing a little checkpoint right here so it's my own faction it's the united iraq confederation going up against the insurgents We've got a little bird in the background here as well providing overwatch support so just kind of one of those crazy two-pronged attacks that my soldiers just react to yeah and i love what you've done with the explosion there in the building that's just that's a really great detail thank you one of the hardest things i think is just keeping those two by twos together because they love to fall apart and keep it organic too. But you know, after a while you get some kind of working for it and it eventually sticks together. There you go, yeah. Well, thanks for bringing the diorama out to the show. Appreciate right, thanks it. Thanks for coming by. Yeah. yeah those, those trans orange antenna pieces uh, have started to be using a lot more since they, the, uh, the ball on the end can fit into a lot of um, like the, the holes that are in pieces. Okay. Um, so it makes it easy to like he has there where he's kind of has the debris being launched from the building it makes it easier to suspend that without mm -hmm. using you know stacks of like clear studs and things like that it gives that extra realistic touch build the next to that nominated for best battle scene is the Mannerheim line and so this is Finland's strongest line of defense so uh, you don't see a lot of Finnish uh, inspired builds here but but I like that. So this was during their uh, war against the Soviet Union so a little bit different take on the the World War II era yeah, and the, the tree technique is also really nice. I'm, from what it looks like, it's, they got the, the traverse bricks with the, um, the the clips on them and kind of have them at different different intervals. And they all, I like the way, especially these trees, and then there's, uh, there's a few other mocks that have the same thing where the, the all the leaves kind of foil from the top down to the mm -hmm. bottom and they all overlap each other. Yeah, and it, just so much realism there. And then the, the white piece is thrown on there like clumps of snow. It's a really nice detail. And then here is a, a build from the Korean War. So then next to that, let's see, we've got a big World War II layout. Yeah, the, uh, it says the mock card says attacking the Gustav line. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the builder's 14, which is actually really, really nice yeah. for, you know, that much. The, uh, the thing I like especially about this is the way that he kind of has all different aspects of, you know, a World War II kind of battle scene built into it you know he's got the tanks he's got the explosions he's got the the buildings um, he has a the crashed um, 26 measure Schmidt in the back um, it's kind of crashed into the wheat field and I really like the, the way he did the wheat field um, a lot of people they'll use the tan bottoms of the levers and they'll put the the pins on top of it he actually has a whole field of brown grill grill tiles mm -hmm. and slides the lever pieces in them so he can set them all differently because you can change the way that the the grill tiles will level out and it makes it a lot easier to kind of remove them and the the way that the measure smith kind of crashed and he's kind of created that that barge of where they've kind of burned out yeah no that's a very good point and then that brings us around back to these planes we started at here so that's another military section uh, i think next we'll go on to Right here, Hard Lug, which is the Hampton Roads Lego user group. And start out in the front here with just these crazy awesome builds. Uh, the giant aircraft carrier up front and then kind of a blimp airship type of build in the back there. Yeah, it's a, looks like almost a blimp kind of mixed with an X-wing. It's got the, <laughs> the wings true. on it. And then the, uh, the massive with the, the dark blue and the white for the, um, the wind turbines. 
Those are really nice, really sleek. The, the way he's got the tiling, like we mentioned earlier with some of the castle builds, that smooth doesn't really happen a lot. Mm -hmm. But in, in city stuff, when you when you have something round like that, something naturally round or mechanically round, to add all those tiles on there gives it that extra that extra smooth kind of that kind of look. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it gives that extra extra look of realism. And then I like the beachfront properties here. So you've got like the dive there, the pink and purple building, and then you've got the Fisherman's Anton's Bait Shop. Uh, one of the, one of the most spectacular builds to come out of Lego Ideas. Yeah, the uh, the brick house back here. I'm not sure. I I guess those are almost custom painted of the the masonry elements. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they were the dark red and he painted in the gray, or they were the gray ones and he painted on the dark red. But those are that looks really nice because it's not like just that plain gray. He's kind of added that real that real red look and with the gray in there you still have the the mortar lines in there mm -hmm. I like this Batman Robin tower there you can build like the Batman insignia into the side yeah I always like the way they set up the the train yards they don't just have the you know the track running along the thing they always have it built up and especially along like the flat strips where they can put pieces they always have debris and kind of have them built down with all different kinds of you know dark tan, light tan, black, all kinds of different colors to mm -hmm. mix in with them. And the brick train there at Lego Movie is it's a unique take on a train. You don't see a lot of trains that look like that. Yeah. Uh, looks like this is the works of a, I guess, giant airfields, airstrip would be would be my guess. Looks like it might be being taken apart at this point, so uh, apparently... It did not work, work out. out. Yeah, <laughs> that's unfortunate. We've got the real quick. Take a look at this. Uh, the builder's badge here. So I think this is the the builder of the the train that we saw earlier. <laughs> yes. So so the badge fits well with the train. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Brig, they were perfect. <laughs> Thank you. So then I know last year, I know last year uh, at this event, the hard lug, they had a massive airfield, airstrip kind of airport part of their city that looked uh, that looked really cool. So it's a bummer to see that. I don't know if they're actually taking it apart or just kind of trying to rebuild it, but mm -hmm. hopefully it'll be up for public hours tomorrow. And then this great Joker's uh, layout there with the, the roller coaster and everything and then the vehicles in the front. Uh, they just the, the colors in that make it pop so much. Mm -hmm. Looks like almost kind of they took like the set and kind of expanded the sign a little bit and then added some more to it in the back and the... Uh, mm -hmm. We've got a collection of brick heads here. Looks like maybe all mostly Marvel characters, some Star Wars characters, DC, so just superhero stuff in general there. And then here's a big long layout. It looks like You've got uh, the brick tick, uh, so you've got the big blue, uh, I think, tick there. And then I don't know, I'm assuming the rest of this layout maybe goes with that? Uh, I guess that might be the, the spaceship mm -hmm. kind of. There may be some more mock cards. Someone who knows more of this uh, source material will probably <laughs> be able to correct us in the, in the comments, but it's a great layout nonetheless. And you see that the sloped uh, windows there is really great, uh, in addition to the just incredible spaceship up top there on top of the mountain. Well, the, the the large use of those big those big trans clear panels, and they use them again here for this this massive greenhouse. Um, the thing I like about this greenhouse in particular is they made it almost entirely trans clear, which makes it so much easier to see inside. Whereas a lot of you know greenhouses in other city layouts, they build them at least for a regular town. They have them, you know, it's like a, a dark red with like the, the the roof is, but with this, you know, you can see it from. Not only the top, you can see it from the sides as well. Mm -hmm. as You can kind of see everything in the back little corners and everything that's hiding from you. Yeah, and I think they used the, the blue train track there, roller coaster track, to do that. Yeah, and it looks like they have a whole variety of solar panel. <laughs> the, I guess that's how they power. Mm -hmm. their, uh, and as well as the incredible rock work that goes along with that. And here's the Lunar Diner. So... This is a retro diner on the moon for those looking for some grilled green cheese or some great moon pies. <laughs> the line of astronauts trying to get in or the line of uh, space, space minifigs trying to get in. And the, uh, uh, the, the sign, the Con Conja Club, I believe it is, that's, um, it's actually a name 
of I want to one of the factions of I want to say bounty hunters in the Force Awakens. Okay. So that's a <laughs> Easter egg. And then I love these kind of biomes there. You've got like the cattle and traditional farm type life happening within the the, the space planet here. And then you can also see that that same kind of wheat field uh, in the the left of the two. Uh, that same wheat field technique. They got those big wheat fields as well as looks like some apple trees and some other plant life going on in there. So that finishes out hard lug for us. So then we'll move on over here to this section right here. We'll start with these these castle builds. So this is a build from Skyrim actually. So if you're familiar, people who are familiar with the game Skyrim will probably recognize this. Uh, lots of those masonry bricks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot. Like I don't know. I'm not sure what exactly what theme this is. There's some Apocalypto, there's some more castle stuff, but any lots of castle builds have used those space hammer bricks, and that's actually it's it's a really helpful element just because you can use it in so many ways, since it has you know the the brick side and it also has just the the straight side that has the two, and you can use those for anything that adds just to add texture. And then the battle for Windhelm here, and. It's just got all sorts of great characters with armor and weapons. And then this bridge is one of the, the most impressive bridges I've seen. I mean, there's an entire pathway uh, on the top of the bridge. Yeah, and I like how that he's included the arch so you can see down the bridge and kind of get that, the minifig eye view of it, of the, of the battle going on inside. And then he did the sort of traditional parts dumping for the water, but he did it in a way where there's different colors, so you get that depth perception there yeah. of, of how deep the water is, and I think that's nice, so it kind of goes that, that extra mile rather than just pouring out the same color studs for everything. This looks like a collection of kind of Batman vehicles from over the years of all different, all different sorts. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the Infinity Gauntlet there, yeah. really smoothed out with all the all the tiles. Yeah. And the, if you zoom like really close to the the, um, the fingers, the studs where the fingers where the joints are, those studs don't actually look connected. They're just kind of sitting there and letting gravity do it to kind of get you get the um, the arch of mm -hmm. of a human hand. Yeah, Jason Wolfson did some great work there with all those the the gold tiles and smooth looking pieces. And then down here we've got some more at the. Phineas and Ferb House, and then some more monsters. You've got Superman in the red locker room getting his uh, uniform on. It's the multiverse annual barbecue. So it's uh, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, Marvel, and DC meet for their annual barbecue and games. So I imagine you could pick out, you know, all of your favorite characters for most people. Uh, this layout. Yeah, it looks like they got like some shooting range, some like paintball almost, some uh, looks like horseshoes, <laughs> shuffleboard, like, like bowling, dodgeball, I'm not, tug of war, <laughs> dunk tank, uh, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. And then here's a, a little more realistic scene from The Hobbit there. And a micro King's Landing from Game of Thrones. I think it's uh, several Game of Thrones builds in a row. Uh, House of Black and White over here. And then I think this is the the North, the big ice wall, which has been depicted a, a number of different times in, in Lego over the years. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a. Uh, I don't. I don't watch Game of Thrones, so I'm not a whole whole lot on these. The the, the big thing that stands out is you know the the massive wall mm -hmm. of just brick and how they've kind of incorporated stuff on top of it as well as below it. Yeah. And then the, the different angles that the walls build up at is, is nice as well. And then here's the uh, Charles Adams childhood home. And so this is the, the inspiration, I believe, for the, the Adams family. And so you kind of see those characters incorporated there. Yeah, I like the, the, head, the use of the, the dragon heads as well as the old like dragon head armor pieces used on this mock is um, kind of, you know, gargoyle-ish, but also extra detail added to them. Mm -hmm. And come down here, you've got plants versus zombies. That's pretty good there. Uh, Morticia and a vampire. And then this is BBC's The Paradise. So I think that's based on a BBC show. Especially some great, when you look at the shopping kind of window displays there, 
Uh, that's really impressive. And it looks like they almost have some decals or something in the, that back room for uh, wallpaper. The the kind of decal, decal or sticker or something like that, the wallpaper. Yeah. And then some smaller Star Wars vignettes and some Star Wars weapons. The Great Hall from Game of Thrones. I like the, the little detail, fun detail there of the janitor just cleaning <laughs> while everyone else is out. And then some more Game of Thrones inspired builds and monsters here. Yeah, it looks like, yeah, that, that, that dragon's really cool the way he uses a lot of the, the sloped point, sloped to a point pieces on the back to, to signify the scales. Mm -hmm. And then Jurassic World stuff here. And a couple of nice character builds, which are not, not easy to do with Lego, but always impressive when, when they're done well like that. And then some some like 2D video game with um, with Mario and Sonic, the way they use the um, especially on the Sonic one, the way they have that kind of layered background as a as like the backdrop to it, but then they have the 3D that's built up in the front. It, you get the whole you get the, the, the 3D in the front and the 2D in the back. Yeah. Kind of get you get the the middle that middle ground. <laughs> These are super impressive builds. I want to give a shout out to the builder, Kat Harris. We interviewed her about those at Bricks Cascade this year, and that video is up on the channel. So anyone who wants to hear from the builder herself on those, I definitely recommend you check that video out. It's really neat. And then finish out this section with the Lego of Zelda, and you got some, some very nice brick-built Zelda characters. Yeah, behind them, there's a pair of, looks like, night vision goggles. <laughs> I wonder if those are wearable. Yeah. And actually next to that is, uh, I think this is... Uh, Fallout 4 Red Rocket. This is actually a really nice kind of post-apocalyptic type building here. Yeah, I like the way that they kind of, the the it's kind of been elevated in a way because they've you know reconstructed it to steel. Because in you know, as much as I've played Fallout, which isn't much, I've you know they kind of scavenged and steal stuff. So you know maybe you took the supports because you needed a material and replaced them. That's well, it's kind of elevated up at a really weird kind of angle. So I think that finishes that section. We'll move back here then and see what we have on display. It looks like this is going to be mostly the custom minifig section with some other stuff, uh, you know, added in. It's how to train, how to train your dragons mm -hmm. from the trailer. I, yeah, I think that's part of the um, trailer for the the new movie to come out, where uh, Toothless meets the, the the female of his species. Okay. Um, I don't know. I haven't watched. I've only watched the trailer like one time. So. <laughs> But I like the, the wall of uh, clear studs almost there in the, the back, so it creates a nice effect for the background of the build. Yeah, and as much as like the, the sleek look of the borders that a lot of put, uh, builders put on their mocks, I like that some of them leave, you know, you can see the, the red filler brick behind it, so you can, um, like uh, the one I had, my mock, I actually, the side is tan, but the back behind it where I have the hills, I left that all open so you can see kind of how it's stacked up. Uh, and I think mocks that do that, they kind of both capture like, the natural land buildup, as well as you can you can see just how they did it, how they stacked up, you know, with the, with plates and the bricks to get certain elevation changes. Yeah, you, you keep that kind of behind the scenes look, and then it also helps people learn. But when they look at that, and they can see, okay, well, this is one way to, to do that build up. So yeah, that's that's a good idea. Especially a lot of the younger builders, because when the when the younger builders, you know, they, they build stuff flat, and then they just try to start stacking stuff up. But you know, by being able to see that, they can kind of start to experiment with stacking stuff. Um, stacking up the, the filler brick in order to change the elevation as opposed to just making, you know, stacks of plates. Exactly. And so then we move down here to some more, some custom minifigs. You've got, these are done by Ryan Duffy. Uh, next to that, you've got his Lego Krusty Krab. Here's a whole bunch of builders all around here. So lots of great work on display. Tommy Duncan, custom minifigs. We got my, a man you might recognize back here <laughs> in the flesh that's right <laughs> John, John, good to see you do you have some minifigs on display okay you want you want to come over and point out your your favorite one <laughs> the skittles okay i think i think we'll go with that guy right there <laughs> okay thank you good to know <laughs> But we also want to point out these great uh, Star Wars characters as well right here. So this is really, are these your builds here? Okay. 
Yeah, so talk about how, how these kind of come together for you. Um, I have a, uh, I'll pull it up for you right here. I got a blank white Lego figure. I put a bunch of, de should I hold this? Uh, no, okay, I okay. And then I put a bunch of water slide decals on it and then it comes out like this. It's got 360 degree. But then um, aside from selling decals, I started doing printed customs. So now I'm doing, um, all these are, are all UV printed. So it's kind of similar to what Cloner Make Customs does, but on a greater scale of detail. So yeah, this is, a, this is something that I've been doing for around seven years. And it just kind of became a, a business slash passion hobby. Yeah, I can see how you've improved on it over the years. And these look really great, so thank you. And then some more awesome custom minifigs. There's so many builders. This, this show in particular, Brick Fair Virginia, I feel like brings out the custom minifig builders more than any other show. And you can just stare and look at these, I mean, minifig by minifig, because there's so many details they put into them. Yeah, I think the, the one thing I like most about looking at these is not even, like, just identifying them and, like, seeing some of your favorite, you know, movie characters or show characters, but the amount of work that goes into each one, like, not even that they're painted, but some of these, um, like, I don't, I don't know if he still has it in the case or not, but um, MGF Customs did a, a group minifigure, and the head was entirely, he sculpted it. Like, he sculpted the entire head, which I don't think a lot of people understand that, like, that, that's a whole nother level of stuff that happens to get these, these minifigs done, both painting, sculpting, you know, all, all kinds of different art, you know, techniques to create these incredible minifigures. Mm -hmm. We've got the DC Hall of Justice, and some more custom minifigs, Kyle Stewart, a number of builders have worked on here. They also all have kind of their own unique way of displaying in a lot of ways. So you, depending on you know, what kind of minifigs they have and everything, they'll display them in different ways. Looks like these are almost, um, they use pieces, like Lego, like system pieces, and built the, the frames, or um, it's a lot of sculpting, but looks like some of the smaller ones in the front are actually the, the minifig babies. Okay. Painted the, the the Pikachu and I don't play Pokemon so I don't know all the all of them but the Pikachu looks like it's a, a minifig yeah, baby. Maybe one been, of those real yeah. tiny yeah. figs. Yeah. Okay. And then just all sorts of neat characters in there. The Dark Knight trilogy custom minifigs. Those are really really impressive. And then some more great characters all throughout here. There's just so many. <laughs> it's, it's almost overwhelming. These are another friend of mine that, that brought some. Um, the, the ones in the, in the cups, <laughs> the upside down cups, the, uh, the US ones, the, the camo paint jobs he does, we, me and him have painted it together uh, or talk about paint stuff together and we've kind of come up with some similar, uh, similar patterns mm -hmm. and stuff, but those are, those are really nicely done. And some superhero stuff there. Got Mario, Luigi. And then some, it's like some anime characters. Some like Infinity War, Thor Ragnarok figures in there as well. Mm -hmm. And then some Transformers down here. So a whole bunch of Transformers all around here and then one, nine constructors combined to form a massive uh, transformer here, so that's pretty amazing. Does that one transform? Okay, so, so you can see on the, there's the different okay, so construction they vehicles. Kinda, they all kind of break back down into their own. Okay. That's really cool. That's, I feel like that's, that's a whole nother level of <laughs> building because you got to yeah. split them up, split up because, you know, for certain ones you got to be able to break the break certain pieces so that it'll fold out to mm -hmm. like that the bulldozer you gotta be able to fold out the thing and right that's really impressive great work and I think some more transformers around the front here as well so transformers popular theme at Brick Fair this year <laughs> and then as you look at these some more <laughs> The Iron Man Hall of Armor over here is really great as well, with all of the different suits. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna guess one of those is like the the Mark 51. I I might be close enough on one of them. 
Oh, mark 50, man. I was so close. I was so close. <laughs> That's true. Uh, the Mark 50 is uh, this one right here, okay. and I do have some multiples, so uh, yeah. I, in this Hall of Armor, there is a, exactly 40 armors, okay. so, um, and then including the Hulkbusters. Um, gotcha. uh, well, even though I can't name them, it's still impressive, and I thank you for bringing them out to the show, because it's yeah. cool to see that many. <laughs> awesome work. <laughs> so I think that finishes out the section in the back here. Beyond that, you can see uh, just as John pans across the room, a bunch of the vendors are kind of in the back this year, so that's kind of how the show is set up. So then that'll be where all the shopping happens, and then up front is where all of the builds are. Yeah, one thing, one thing to uh, note about the layout this year is LEGO actually has an officially licensed store uh, in the back um, this year, that, which I don't think has ever happened before, at least at this show. Yeah, we should, let's go back, walk back there. Why not take a look at it? Because uh, this that is very unique. Yeah, this is something that I think Lego is sort of experimenting with and trying to figure out, is this something they could do at other shows? And how can they scale this operation up? So uh, you, you look back here, and yeah, this is certainly not a, a normal store setup that you would see it at most show, shows. So it's kind of interesting because one, one of my local Lego store workers actually is working this. Okay. Uh, and we were, we were talking about it when I was in there the other day. And I asked him, I was asking him about it, and he said that they... Uh, they actually set up this morning, um, and it's it's more for the public. Um, I mean, obviously, because you know we we don't really you know use a Lego store to other than buy like pick brick cups. And, <laughs> but um, yeah, they I mean they got shelves set up. They got the whole big space up here, um, all set up for the for the public tomorrow. So yeah, and, and uh, they got the yellow backdrops and everything. So it kind of gives that that store effect. It's not quite like walking into a normal Lego store, but it kind of gives that effect. I mean, yeah, there's no floating giant yellow brick in the sky but uh, the the tarps back i mean they have this behind this wall behind those tarps it's all inventory to okay. re to restock as people buy stuff tomorrow i saw them setting it up so um but yeah it's it, it's it's kind of interesting because the way um they they're really only doing it for the public which it's kind of like i, I was talking to some of my friends about it and we were thinking that it was kind of like a long shot because they're just coming for the public like I don't think they were open at all today for for the exhibitors so it's kind of you know they're encroaching on like the 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 community that we've kind of created here to you know sell their product outside of their stores but. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah but it'll be interesting to see how it does and they've got all the the checkout registers and everything there so I'm sure this will be a very busy area here at the at the cool. back this whole area back here is you've got all the vendors, you know, Eclipse Graphics, Citizen Break, they're all here, so all the all the all the big names. Sure. It's always great to see the new products they have. After a brief break to help us rest and recuperate, we are back to finish the tour uh, and finish out the whole convention floor here. So starting with these really massive builds, we've got back Batman singing into a mic, just jamming out. Yeah, so the the Batman as well as some of the, these friends builds down here, these were all I believe these were brought by the Lego Group. Um, so they've they've kind of they've signified their their main themes, uh, or two two big themes, um, and have the have them all set up. I love the friends character with the the bow and arrow here and the shield. That's such a such an unusual build for uh, this this type of Lego build here with that but the bow and arrow and stuff. So I think that's really neat. Yeah, on Wednesday when they were setting it up, they had the they had her on this side and all the animals over here, and they they were trying to think about how to do it so it didn't look like she was shooting towards the animals. <laughs> that's the kind of tricky situation you can get yourself into. You don't want to get any animal abuse <laughs> any, any animal abuse charges at a Lego convention. That's that's, that's bad news. Very true. Very true. Or just just in general. <laughs> They dim the lights at 10 o'clock okay. or 11 o'clock. Can we get the okay from the cameraman to keep going? I think if we can see good enough, we'll just keep going then. That should be fine. So got some of these big Olympic buildings here. I think some of these we've definitely shown in past tours. Guns and ammo. Uh, this, this show is kind of notorious for being, I think, this Dulles Expo Center where the show is held. has a number of gun shows that come through throughout the year, so you'll see references to that. Yeah, I've seen some of these, some of these buildings before. These are ones that have been with the, uh, I'm not sure, I don't know exactly which lug this is, but um, they've been here a few times. The, the bowling alley. Starbucks and, on the corner there. Uh, and I don't know, I don't know if it was this one or one of the other ones, but they, they had a lot of um, like the, the fast food chain restaurants, like the, the Krispy Kreme there. 
Uh, I think there was a Pizza Hut a few years ago too. So. Yeah. Then the big the castle there, castle bed and breakfast, military surplus. Drive-in movie theater, mm -hmm. and then kind of behind that you get into like the park and the the circus. You know, activities kind of area with the the arcade. That's actually that's arcade is really cool with. Yeah, that really is with the lights and everything. I mean, these these builds that use the vibrant Lego colors to really make it pop. I feel like even though Lego makes such so many really neat vibrant colors, they really aren't incorporated in too many builds. Uh, it's it's kind of rare for builders to build these things that I think builders like to build either realistic or you know kind of some of the darker colors. Yeah, I think it's actually it, I think it takes more skill to use like the, the the trans colors and like the really bright colors than it than more so like you know tan and gray and things like that because those are such plain colors whereas you got to really use the, the trans colors you know in certain ways to make sure it doesn't overcompensate for something and uh, this is the, the that's the Dulles Expo Center I was thinking of with the, the gun show yes. and then some more some more military here and there's some really impressive ones this Operation Market Garden I love the telephone wires uh, and then all the detailed uh, plants and everything on there are very nice. Yeah, so I don't, I don't think that's a um, uh, specific town, but the uh, the Operation Market Garden was a, a failed attempt to get from. Uh, they they landed the uh, several parachute um, or airborne divisions between the the British and the U.S. dropped into occupied Holland and attempted to take bridges to move a um, British armored unit over the Rhine into Germany. Um, it didn't work. Um, but to, it was the, I believe it was the worst, considered the one of the worst defeats the U.S. faced uh, during the Second World War. So. Then a wonderful eastern front build here uh, with the, the mix of ice and then kind of the, the dirt path and everything going over the bridge. Some more, some more modern and just some, some sci-fi with the G.I. Joe and some Halo. We've got the, the G.I. Joe building with... Uh, Let's see. I think those are. No, I'm, I'm blanking on the name of the the tiny Lego Modulex. That's what it is. Yes, the tiny Modulex uh, bricks there. And then a bit of kind of National Boy Park Scout. Boy Scout yeah. stuff, which I think we'll see a lot more of in a few minutes when we go into the other hall here. Uh, but there's a little bit of this Boy Scout stuff to to finish out this section. And then coming around here, so move over. Pop culture, yeah. okay. So, starting here with uh, Kevin Hinkles, uh, always brings out lots of builds based on characters that I don't know anything about, but they're always fun to see. And uh, watch seeing his work is always a pleasure. So, uh, I, I love these character builds that he does, and then also his Super Mario Brothers uh, kind of level that he built there. Yeah, I don't remember which one it was, but I, I want to remember he was building one of these on the stream last year. Yes, yeah. So on our 24-hour live stream, he's done some of those builds and worked on that stuff over the years. That's really cool. With the, um, he's got the, the building there, but he also has the reference picture to kind of show what he's built there, which is pretty cool. And then this is the Battle of Sokovia, which is the, the massive Marvel battle fan, which it, or battle, uh, which is just super awesome. Uh, I love this here with the, the central scene there with a bunch of the characters inside and then the city all around. So I think this was a collab with at least six different builders I think listed here. Yeah, it's the way they have all the all the surrounding buildings, especially all the, the, the telephone poles that kind of spread out to everywhere, and then the, the main battle scene in the middle. Um, and all the, like the, the brown building up here in the front kind of has all the detailed, all the, all the detail on all the buildings that surrounds, you know, that main, that main scene is really nice. And then some character builds here. These, you know, getting characters built like this with Lego is not easy at all. Uh, these are done by Nathaniel Stoner. I think all of these are his work. And these just really impressive when you can capture the, the realism and the movement uh, in some of these builds. Uh, it's just really neat. Yeah, he, uh, I want to say one of these he was building on stream. I, wanna say, I, think, okay. it was, I think it was the, yeah. the Flash or one of, the, one of these newer ones he was building on stream last year. So oh, then Deathstroke I really love and kind of the the how, the plane there. I like the, the, the cool color combination, the way he worked the orange into the black. And then got some Boy Scouts of America stuff here. I think we've got maybe some more Transformers. 
Transformers, again, a, a popular theme here at this show. We've got, let's see, is this a, a wearable Black Panther mask? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I built it specifically for the World of Lights, so you can kind of see the little vibranium glowing out through the cracks right there. I'm going to be wearing it around a couple of times, so you might see me. Okay. Nice. Yeah. That's impressive. Thank you. <clears throat> then La La Land. It's like a, um, like a in full detailed interior of a, looks on a Wayne's Manor. Uh, you got the bat cave underneath and then the, the mansion up above. Yeah, these and I've seen a, a bunch of builds of the the bat cave and Wayne Manor over the years, but they're they're always impressive because everybody has their own take on it. And then there's just so much to look at between the mansion and the bat cave underneath that it, it never gets boring looking at that. Yeah, and I like that they have it up on that they have backwards so you can see all the all the full decorated interiors of all the different rooms and. Uh, are, I think, Daleks. Is that from Doctor Who? I think uh, Rise of the Three. I'm just going to say that and we'll see what happens. It looks like Romans fighting them. So I'm not sure exactly what's happening. I'm sure someone uh, in the comments can let us know what this what this ex is exactly based on. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't watch Doctor Who. So. <laughs> All the like big shows that have builds here, I have no idea what they are. <laughs> and then I think we got a few smaller vignettes there and that finishes out this area for us. So we'll go around here. They've got the ever-present Brickington Post where you can get your photo behind the uh, display there. And then we've got some Minecraft Steve. We've got the Beast from Beauty and the Beast. This is a performance of Jesus Christ Superstar in concert. And then here's a little deck of a, like a Settlers of Catan a whole layout here. So they've got the board, you got all the different play pieces. That's I think different builders have, have put their twist on that over the years. It's such a popular game with the, in the Lego community. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. I actually um, I play the the like the actual board game version of Catan, and did something kind of like that, but for um, for Risk. Okay. But uh, it's really hard to do because you got to do like a micro scale map and then have all the added pieces and stuff. And here I think we're entering into Ninjago City, so a big uh, layout here. You can see some mechs in there, the Palace Cinema, like a, sort of a monorail train on top there, and then a uh, Batcave next to that. I like the way you can, he's kind of has that, that hole up in the top by the stairs, so you can see the light coming down in the back where the stairs are at. 57th annual Justice League anniversary party. You've got uh, Arkham Breakout here, and a bunch of scene, different scenes with different superheroes and villains in them. The Moss Eisley Cantina in the back. Just a lot of cool, like iconic pop culture-ish. They got the, um, yeah, the Ghostbusters in there. Stranger Things. And then a few buildings here. Some massive <laughs> Star Destroyers. <laughs> this one's the ISD Tyrant. It's the biggest one. I think it's about 35,000 pieces, but uh, I haven't counted. Um, and that's the Aggressor. That's like a Victory Class Star Destroyer, a smaller kind of Star Destroyer. And that's the uh, Constrictor, an interdictor cruiser. Um, and they all have interiors, like the, uh, the bridge comes off. Um, and this was my first big mock like as an adult, so it, it's sort of a pain to take it apart. Um, that one's a lot easier though, the, uh, the aggressor. Um, it slides off on rails. You've got like a conference room up top. More and more detail as you take the layers off there. Yeah, and uh, I couldn't fit the bridge inside the actual bridge, so it's uh, right here. You have like a little captain walk along there. Um, oh, the, the turrets actually move where they can when the top is on there.
just slide out section after section here. <laughs> yeah, I sort of ran out of table space. Uh, I always come in late. Um, I live in DC, so I just decided to come at the last second. There you go. <laughs> so this one, like, I could take that one apart, but it would take about 15 minutes, I think, to get down to level one. Um, whereas this one, it only takes like a, about a minute, two minutes maybe. These two have got like folding TIE fighters in there. That's incredibly impressive. Thanks for showing us the inside there. That's that's really great. And the fact you brought all three of these is amazing. So thank you so much. So there you get a little movement in there as well. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not real great at interviews. Sorry. <laughs> that's all good. They, you did a great job showing that to us. Thank you. We're going to keep moving with the tour now, so appreciate it. And then I think we also have the builder uh, of this next rather large build with us as well. So if you want to give a quick overview of what this it's is. not just me. This was actually a, a collaborative okay. for the club. There's about eight of us that did this. The funny thing about this or the ironic thing was that this whole concept started prior to them announcing that the re-release of the 20th anniversary Harry Potter set. So it was kind of neat that, that it ended up being finalized here. Um, we didn't... Uh, have any enough Hufflepuff and Ravenclaw, so we had those custom printed. But there's some phenomenal work as we um, get done here talking. I'll show you a couple pieces. Underneath the uh, Hagrid's Hut lid is uh, Hagrid's Hut inside. That's from the third movie. Of course, Aragog, the spider, and in uh, several scenes. So as people look, it's funny because I've already been critiqued tonight by a couple really strict um, Harry Potter fans that are like, well, this this isn't right, that's not right, because you know each movie transitioned into a different person being in, into, the, into the Quidditch match. Each person, the, the uh, my my blockers don't have bludgers, so they I, I have to have bludgers before it opens up tomorrow. So um, yeah, let, let, we'll go up here and I'll show you a couple of things real quick. And, sure, yeah. Uh, yeah, so here's the, here's the inside of Hagrid's hut. And like I said, this is based on the third movie. If you actually look at the pictures and stuff from the fourth movie and after, the windows are actually in a different different wall. So that's why I said this one's from the third one. The other ironic thing about this display is the privy behind it, also known as an outhouse. But that was only shown in the third one on the, as far as the movie. And then inside of here, you'll notice here is the Hufflepuff, custom printed. And then the Ravenclaw custom printed. So yeah, so it was a fun build. It was, like I said, six or eight of us did it. Yeah, you incorporated lights into it and everything. So that's, that's great. Thanks so much for showing that to yeah, us. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Definitely, thank you. <laughs> yeah. And then we've got uh, Bob, Bob the Builder here, which is in kind of a mix of both uh, Duplo and Bricks. And uh, fun fact, shout out to uh, Andreas from Zazumgabot for sharing this uh, educational piece with, with us and everyone who goes through the Lego archive. In Germany, they call him Bob the Baumeister, which I think is the German word for builder. So I, that always cracks me up. I've always found that hilarious. I think it's just such a cooler name than Bob the Builder. So uh, shout out to Andreas for that fun fact. And then we've got the Monsters, Inc. character in the back there. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's pretty interesting the way they have the, the, the lime green and the sand blue. And then these, these hats up front. Mm -hmm. Those are really nice, too. And I think this, this one down on the table in front is a, like a cowboy hat. Yeah, these awesome. hats are intense. That's yeah. pretty crazy. Yeah. <laughs> they have to be very structurally sound to actually wear them. We did have one last uh, cubicle we wanted to hit in here before we move in. To the, to the rest of the build. So this brick fair is kind of divided into two halls, the bigger hall out here we're just finishing up now and then we'll move into the smaller hall next. So you've got the sword right here. And then some excellent car builds. You move down here, you got Lamborghini. This is all the Forza shop. And and let's uh, this is the Rainbow Six collaborative between Simon Lewis and some of the other guys that do uh, 
they each pick an operator. Um, so that's uh, Valkyrie. So that's her, her, uh, her, her mid-range assault rifle and her, um, her tactical cameras. And then I think uh, this other one's Recruit. So you got the, the P90, the shotgun, um, some of the impact grenades, and the, the shotgun shells go along with it. Yeah, so, so we featured this whole collab at Brickwell Chicago this year. The builders are there. So we have a whole video on that on the channel. If people want to check that out, I uh, definitely encourage you to do that because it's a, a number of talented builders were involved in that. Some brickheads here. Uh, I think the Red Letter Media guys. Uh, you've got some little tiny vignettes and scenes. Some minifig layouts. Let's see, you've got Guardians of the Galaxy with the Milano and the Mary Poppins scene. Very iconic. <laughs> and some other, some other transformers. Some bigger transformers, uh, and then some more custom minifigures. And then this build here with all of the different horn pieces uh, to get that flowing effect of movement is amazing. According to the mod card, it's a, it's a Pokemon. It's a R Arcanine. So that's really cool, especially the way they use the, the Technic to kind of pose it up with its, with its hind legs. And then some of these, these brick-built characters with the uh, most recognizable by younger, younger fans would be the, the Fortnite Llama um, and some other Disney characters. Fortnite being very popular as of the recording of this video. <laughs> I'm, a pub, I'm a PUBG guy. There you go. You gotta have your loyalties, you know. <laughs> the Up House. Looks like another. This is the Arkham movie. Hospital, I think. Right. So yeah. Something underneath, almost like a hidden garage or something there. The pop culture garage in the Titan Tower. So I think you got like the Teen Titan characters. Uh, and then the always ubiquitous bounce houses uh, that Todd always supplies at Brick for Every Year. Lots of fun for both public and private day adults. Yeah, well, I, the wiped out, the wipeout one is a, uh, it's a danger. I think I don't know, was it Wednesday or Thursday? There was an ambulance outside. Oh wow! Uh, somebody, I heard the word ankle. I don't know if it was broken or whatever, but somebody got injured in there. I have no idea who or if they're back, but dangerous, uh, da <laughs> dangerous inflatables. So I think we'll start here on the left in this this room. So we just uh, just moved halls, actually. So uh, we've got a few different themes in here. So this is the Junior Ranger National Park stuff, uh, which is pretty cool. So they're able to kind of spread awareness about the National Park uh, efforts while with Lego here. And there's all sorts of park-related stuff and kind of what is a park ranger and then also scenes from different national parks throughout the country. Uh, so you've got like the... The Clara Barton uh, historic site that John was showing there. I, I really like the Wright Brothers uh, National Memorial there. I think is really neat. They got the, uh, the Gettysburg National mm -hmm. Memorial as well. Some really cool, really cool state parks. I think that one right there might be sort of based on the Hans Christian Andersen uh, gift with purchase that Lego released. Here's some uh, Lego minifigs, uh, employee minifigs being arrested. All just different kinds of uh, different kinds of vehicles. Some some World War II, some some modern like looks like almost police kind of vehicles. Mm -hmm. and then a big maze with a whole bunch of minifigs. And there's like a depiction of a Lego store employee, I think, with the the famous yellow apron. Uh, Duplo land, and it looks like a. Looks like some almost some different takes on some of the modular buildings, the like the green grocer with the the, um, the cantilever kind of rounded out mm -hmm. tower, and then the, uh, the the bridal bridal store kind of taken under the um, the uh, the laundromat uh, barber shop. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I like the colorful yellow and red siding there. Next to the abandoned building, of course. <laughs> well, one thing that, that I like about these houses is um, the houses that I designed, I've designed on LVD. I like when the the use of the the cheese slopes upside down as siding. Mm -hmm. um, so I built a, I designed a um, single family home on LVD and used all tan for like the the kind of like darker siding. Um, it's a lot of cheese slopes, but it looks cool. Yeah. Yeah. And it works well for those modular buildings. So we'll just across the aisle here and 
Starting over here with, I think this is sort of an airport scene. And so you've got, I like how they use the trains clear pieces to, to have this plane taking off. Uh, and then the bigger, sh or, uh, bigger planes there in the middle. And then a big cargo plane right here. So this was built, I believe it says 11 year old, which is quite impressive. And they're using your colors. <laughs> That's right. It's, it's the beyond the brick private jet prototype right there. Private, private cargo plane. <laughs> carry all your stickers over there. That's right. We need something to carry our stickers. <laughs> okay, so this is, this is the Okie Lug display. So they have some historical stuff as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so they've got the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier and then the Quezon Procession, yeah. And then we come around here, the Memorial Day mosaic, which I always think is neat with the different soldiers throughout uh, American history there. And then the, uh, I like this, this big medic ship here. Um, it comes... World War II Japanese cruise ship. Okay, so yeah, so it's a, a Japanese medical mm -hmm. um, ship. It actually it kind of reminds me of the um, the British flag medical ships that they used uh, at Dunkirk. The mm -hmm. kind of the, the white with the um, with like the smokestacks and stuff. Yeah, you don't see a lot of medical ships like that. So that's a, that's a nice unique build that has a, a lot of great details. So so we'll start over here then and make our way around. And so this is Richmond Lego Users Group. Some of the, it looks like uh, they have the stickers out. So some of these were built by members from RVA Lug. Got that great beetle there. Some of these vehicles are just amazing. I love the, the excavator and the heavy highway hauler, uh, the semi there. Yeah, other than those few mocks, I think this, this line is mostly like mixed stuff because you got, you know, stuff from, uh, you know, this, this like smaller, just kind of randomized, randomized builds. A lot of these have movement in them. I know we've shown these in past years, uh, like the one with the hammer and the, the prisoner there. So I think some of these, when they're moving, are pretty impressive. Yeah, so more like little battle scenes and custom minifigures around. And we can hop in and out here of the, the middle sections and make sure we hit everything. So this is a big train yard. Uh, we start with, start with the bricks i think this is the concert hall so there's a a concert happening inside there it would appear it's like they got some lights rigged up in there and stuff too so mm -hmm. that's pretty nice it kind of feeds out into the the large train yards and then the big Maddow falls engine shop nice bridge built over the trains so this is monty's lego trains looks like monty's lego trains.net is their website so you can, I'm sure, if, check out more online if you want to see more from this builder. They do have quite the quite the train collection going on here. Yeah, and it looks like they got some uh, like some customized train cars down here. They got the the brick fair, uh, like maybe some personal ones with like colleges and stuff. Mm -hmm. And this massive uh, Technic bridge that allows the the nine volt to run. It says the bridge will open every hour on the half hour. So I think this bridge actually opens and closes, and you kind of watch that. Uh, the public can see that. And I like their giant Brick Fair Virginia 2018, almost mosaic type build. And I think they change it every year okay. to make it say the, the year, <laughs> which would be interesting because you have to go that far down to, <laughs> to get to it. <laughs> Not the easiest parts to change out on that build. You see a nice combination of Duplo and more system bricks here. And another thing to point out, these, these kind of trees up here, that instead of using the leaf pieces, they're using uh, one by two plates and then some of these taller, like almost like oak-like trees, are using the um, the, the quarter round mm -hmm. plates instead of the instead of the leaf pieces. So it's a lot more Lego-esque than you know natural, mm -hmm. uh, which I think kind of complements the the way they have the landscape and the rock were built up. So then we'll move back to the edge over here, and I think we've got maybe some optical illusion type of builds possibly. Uh, this one is all built with eyes, <laughs> which is always a strange build to look at. Here's uh, Wipeout. Wipeout, yeah, I love that. <laughs> Such a clean looking build there uh, with the water, obviously right before the minifig crashes in. Mm -hmm. And I like the way they like they smoothed out kind of the, the exterior around it, but they also have the, the way they use those wedge plates to get the, the arrows almost mm -hmm. on the mats to, to line up just right. Here's the maze with some excellent lighting incorporated in there, almost like lanterns on the corners. 
and then lights inside the carousel. the carousel. Yeah, and then it looks like the um, the teacups. So kind of it's like, you know, just um, like carnival rides and activity rides mm -hmm. and things. I think these, these builds were all done by Adam Quest, uh, which is just I, yeah. I think he's done some great work. I guess they're on a timer. Something like or something. that. It's just started. <laughs> There's nobody back there, <laughs> unless he's hiding under the table somewhere. That's true. You never know what's going to happen. But yeah, this and this is even at the way he did all that brick bending around the outside and everything. Yeah, I think that's that. That's definitely really interesting. The way I think the way he has it kind of framed out because he has. Um, yeah, the, the main base rotating this way, all the smaller ones rotating this way, and then the other, other ones rotating the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. So he has lots of different directional changes. Sort of a cathedral church type of building. Some great micro little builds there. Micro cities. Uh, then whatever these things are. <laughs> these micro cities, though, they have, um, instead of using like base landscaping, those are uh, like the old tank treads just kind of come like squeeze together to form because you can kind of see how they're they mesh together in some of the middle spaces and then they, they have the bases built underneath them mm -hmm. that's a great technique yeah then to the left over here this king motel sign uh it's mock cards says a mid-60s motel sign built by doug foreman i love it and you can even see he's got all that wire that lights up and flashes there like your classic uh motel sign look uh so this done with lego is just a really great effect yeah. The only thing, only three things you need: AC, pool, and a TV. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Who needs Wi-Fi? Yeah. I mean, back in the you know the 60s, <laughs> right, who yeah. cared? Some nice vans and then some some Duplo kind of just uh, some Duplo builds. And it looks like some kind of movie theater. And then comedy and tragedy sort of theater faces. A little. Crab restaurant here, the lanterns hanging down. Chess board, mm -hmm. and some other just like, uh, you know, minifig scale vehicles. I got some Hummers, some cars. We'll turn around to this centerpiece over here. Yes. Historical, yes. all the historical stuff. So, so this is a battle. Did, did you guys work on this here? Oh, is this, this, okay, so it's a collab here. So you want to just give us a quick overview of what this is? All right, so it's the War of 1812 and 1814, and this is the last battle um, before America starts pulling out of, uh, like, you know, Canada and their invasion. Um, so the Americans eventually lose the battle, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's all we need to know. Thank you. It's a great build. Uh, I love the minifig setup and everything. One second, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll do it real quick here. We'll do, we'll do a quick signing uh, mid-tour. Caden, uh, <laughs> why don't you take over for a second, and I'll join you, join you back up. So the, the historical section, it has a lot more, um, it's a lot, it's basically World War I and before. Um, anything like the World War towards modern is all going to be in uh, the military section, where this is more Roman, more War of 1812, independence, um, any, any like dragon sword fighting shield stuff is going to be more pirates. That's all going to be in, in historical. There you go. Now I'm back. <laughs> so, yeah, I love those two builds Sean's showing there with the, the Thermopylae and then Alexander entering, Bab entering Babylon. Uh, those are The ancient history builds aren't covered real well, I feel like, with the, the Lego community. So seeing these builds, especially the Alexander one, is, is really neat. And the way he's used that, that net technique again that we saw earlier where he kind of has the, those canopies kind of dip in and out. Mm -hmm. And then... This is kind of caveman, almost prehistoric type of build here. Uh, you can see like a woolly mammoth on that part of the build. There's some hunters out and a beautiful landscaping here just starting. I mean, you kind of start very low, just like a brick or two high there. And then it builds up so nicely. Uh, and you just, you, you take it all in as you look at the build. Well, and the, the legs of these creatures down here, they're actually the old um, like police patrol yeah. sign things <laughs> in tan which is actually really interesting. I've never seen that done before. I'm assuming they're probably connected to a Technic brick. It's just mm -hmm. got the holes in them to keep them on there. But that's a, that's a really interesting technique for, for um, natural, uh, like, creatures' legs. And here's a build depicting the, the surrender of the British Army to uh, George Washington at the Revolutionary War. So lots and lots of mini depicted there. And then... 
keep coming down here. I'm not sure exactly what it looks like. This is kind of a Indian uh, battle happening here, nominated for best historical. There's no mock card to pay, saying exactly what this is, but it looks like there's a bit of a battle taking place. And those are some really nice um, custom brick built horses as well. Mm -hmm. The way they're uh, they're very they're very detailed as well as they have uh, yeah. The, you can see with some of the way that the legs are built, they're very poseable. Yeah, you don't see a lot of brick built horses like that in a build, so. That's nice. And you've got a bunch of Egypt-inspired builds now. I think this is this is the uh, the Pharaoh's Labyrinth mm -hmm. collaboration. So. so we've shown some parts of this in the past. I think it switches up every year and kind of how they display it and everything. But it's lots of cool uh, Egyptian-inspired builds, the columns and everything here. And then the, the main centerpiece is this massive pyramid of Anubis with all the different areas inside there. Uh, with the coffins and the mummies and stuff. And like the, the chamber of kind of the, the mummified bodies or mm -hmm. the skeletons down there. And then the big fight happening here. <laughs> You've got the cavemen and the mummy hordes. <laughs> quite, quite a large battle happening there. The Ring of the Gods, uh, TARDIS landing, another Doctor Who reference. Indiana, Indiana Jones inspired kind of the, the boulder coming down on everybody. Mm -hmm. So it's a uh, munchkin kick open the door there. <laughs> and then Atlantis Labyrinth. So we'll turn back around to the edge here as we continue in this room. So got some different, and I'm not sure exactly what's happening there. If that's uh, if they're like 3D kind of side mosaics of those three pictures. Okay. So you kind of got to look at it from, oh, the, from yeah, the top. Yeah. Gotcha. That makes sense. Got a couple depictions of Lego DNA. And then... One of my favorite mocks here. <laughs> this mass, it's, so he has one of, the, uh, one of the squares missing, so I think you can actually uh, move the segments around mm -hmm. uh, and kind of like slide them in and around each other. So he had it set up with, uh, with it spelled correctly earlier. But... Great. Great work here, right, Stuart? Absolutely. I love this. First of all, I'm a big Capitals fan, but uh, second of all, it really fits the puzzle theme we have. And it's if you have, you have you had a chance to use it yet? I haven't. No. It actually slides really, you know, like a chunk right into place. It's. Uh, you want to you want to show it, Joe, how it works? You can model it for us. It's just like the puzzle, the normal uh, kind of puzzle, like this, where you have the different sections that move like this, and you have to figure out how to orient it to get the right. I'm not good at solving those puzzles, but 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 right. but as a, as a design for Lego, it's just awesome. I think. And as you said, puzzle is the theme this year, so it works really well. What do you think? Should we should we do should we get this guy to put this on um, Lego Ideas? <laughs> I'm sure that'd just be wildly popular. <laughs> I'm, sure that, I'm sure that would that would fit the uh, size requirements. <laughs> and all of the non uh, Capitals fans, I'm sure, would be big into it as well. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. Some Capitals bricks engraved earlier, and the the guy uh, Tim, who does all of our badges here, is a Penguins fan. So, <laughs> so he, he he wasn't super excited about doing them, but got some more. Got like a board game sort of thing going on here, and then it looks like so. This is all along the the puzzle theme here. So I think this whole would be like the theme section. So there's like this little. Gem from Japan, a Japanese puzzle. You've got all different. Oh, that's cool. That that picture back there. That whole that little Lego um, thing that comes apart into the mm -hmm. different the different frames are each like one in of itself. Yeah. So it's like four different sections. That is neat. And then oh, imitation games. So you've got kind of the the building of the the first computer in the Enigma machine there. So complex puzzles as well. <laughs> and then to finish out here, uh, nominated for best sculpture, this is Rubik's Guardian. And it's, uh, oh, it's like a Rubik's Cube. Wow. And it looks like it can probably actually, the cubes actually turn. And the head turns and everything. Wow, this is this is amazing. Yeah, those wings are, they, I guess it looks like it uses the uh, ball joint pins, and those are all Batman capes. <laughs> 
Is, is this your build here? Oh yeah, yeah, if you don't mind, yeah. This is, this is really neat. <laughs> Definitely see how this works real quick. Uh, certainly not every day you see a <laughs> massive yeah, yeah. dragon on top of the, the Rubik's Cube. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's really cool. Especially the way that the, the, all the capes kind of fold down. Mm -hmm. There you go. You got the different colors, the mouth opens. Wow, that's fantastic. Thank you so much. That's amazing. <laughs> got Llama LTC and then I think one other section of pop culture. Uh, so this is all the, the Llama LTC yeah. section then? Okay, gotcha. So we've got some different city layouts, some buildings, some, some builders still hard at work here getting everything set up. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. That video with Jing is a good video. Everyone should check that out. <laughs> there are many, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Really cool, like old style, kind of. Uh, I think the based on what the A is, I think it's a um, Star Trek inspired something. Mm -hmm. Based on the the A and the. Uh, the, uh, the A does look kind of like the Star Trek logo. No, nominated for best train slash town building here uh, is this stone house tavern. Uh, so it's almost like a uh, German beer garden sort of building, which is pretty cool. And then here's a whole lay city block basically in that, uh, you know, kind of facade, the brick facade, which I, is, is neat when you see all those buildings like that. Yeah, especially when they, they kind of combine the, the corner units with the, the straight units mm -hmm. all using that same kind of design. And the monorail going around there, and then we have some massive buildings. I like the the block on top there that incorporates tons of brick badges over the years. There's uh, let's see, Brickfest 2005, 2006. So some of the the Brickfest shows, which were the original before Brick Fair came to this area, they had those shows. Brickfest 2002. <laughs> yeah. That's, there's a lot of history in that that section right there. <laughs> This is a big Union uh, Union Station build. Uh, I like the that has all the lights inside too. That's mm -hmm. that's really nice. And then a massive train yard with a bunch of you got kind of the train, as we said with Union Station, and then you go out to the trains, and then uh, you come out here. There's even like a round table type of thing with uh, some of Brick Model Railroaders uh, nominated for Best Train Car there, the excellent work that they always do. It's always fun to see what they bring. And it kind of comes down into like town and town farm, kind of out like outskirts of the city. Mm -hmm. All yeah. kinds of gardens and farmhouses and stuff. Less urban as we, as we go along here yeah. uh, and then enter sort of back into the city. I love the Coke Zero. That's all brick built lettering on the side of that building. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of plates. <laughs> the Lego coaster incorporated in here. I know a lot of people are big fans of that set. Yeah, it seems like they have a kind of a lot of the the rides and stuff that would be affiliated with the um, well, so a Lego Land. So they got uh, all the Lego mm -hmm. activity based, you know, sets. Here's a. Yeah. Plane pulling the banner with the Wama LTC uh, logo and letters there. That's really cool. The way they the way they have it suspended is really nice because it's a you're looking at that more than you're looking at the the, the trans clear. So. <laughs> and then arcades and buildings, ice cream shops, and everything along sort of the the boardwalk here. Yeah. And it kind of comes back over into the harbor, mm -hmm. harbor and all the industrial like shipment. Area. Then we'll head this direction and make sure we show we're, we're about done here. Just a few more areas on the left. It, uh, passing is the, the GBC layout, and you can see it's a massive layout here. But since it's not running, it's kind of boring looking. So we'll definitely, as always, have a, a GBC video to show you guys from Brick Fair, Virginia. So let's go down here to the end and check this out and kind of make our way down and show you a bunch of this. There's some really impressive Star Wars builds in this section right here. So if we start on the end here, we've got the Clone Wars era with the Battle of Jakku. 
uh, starting at the end here. Yeah, a lot of the uh, a lot of the pop culture. Um, the great thing about Star Wars is since there's so many battles, you can kind of do different takes on different things. Um, so like the the Battle of Utapau, the the it was um, uh, the Utapau is it's it's a planet where a lot of the inhabitants they live in these like large circular cylindrical kind of downgrades like into the ground. So there's lots of platforms and things like that. So this uh, they all kind of drop down into something else. So. And this builder, uh, Griffin King, I think it says the name on the mock card there, has done some great rock work with all the landscaping to build that up. And he's 17, which is it's, it's pretty good for 17, mm -hmm. especially with all the like the addition of the, the rock work and the, all the texturing as well uh, in the background and on the landscaping on top as well. And then we move down here. This is adjoining restaurant on Corellia, and so this is like a Corellia layout here. Uh, so it's a little more peaceful than your average Star Wars scene. Well, yeah, there's no, there's no rebels there. It's just, just stormtroopers. <laughs> and then next to that, we have David Hall. Is this is this your layout right here? Yeah, I'm almost done with it. Okay. I got nominated for the first time. Yes. Definitely. Congratulations. Thank you so much. It was not what I expected. Best landscape. I was just like, all right, I mean, I'll take it. But that was really cool. It was the first time. So, yeah. Looks like it's coming along well though, so I'm sure you've just got a, a little bit more time and you'll have it ready for the yeah, public. I just got to put the figures down and then like dress up the, the water so it looks like the footprints are there. Are you guys like doing a tour of the whole brick? We are. We're actually almost done here, so we're just finishing out with this section right here and that'll finish the whole the whole convention hall. It's been like an hour? Uh, long, much longer than that. Yeah, I don't even, I don't even know. <laughs> just barely. We're hanging on. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So then this is, uh, I love these builds that incorporate like the, the big construction style Star Wars figs and these, these even have like brick built trees with the big canopy on top there. So, so these are, it's such a different take on Star Wars. I always like that. Yeah. It, 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 it's kind of cool because you, you don't see that a lot where it's, you know, it's a lot more of the mini figures and stuff because you don't have as much variety when it comes to the, the bigger figures. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas, you know, in, in mini figs you have every mini fig they've released, but the, you, there's very select few when it comes to the, the buildable ones. We got Jabba's Palace there. We got a Hammerhead Corvette. And a little desert scene there, and then a big. Uh, I think that's another one of the, the models that Lego brought. Okay. Um, I'm not sure, though. You can see the, the white is uh, definitely yellowing there a bit, so certainly, certainly weathered. And here's the Geonosis Execution Arena. This is actually really cool. So this is this this is like kind of after they've gotten past the uh, the the creatures and gotten off their their things, and they even have the the Easter egg where C-3PO's head is on a uh, on a battle droid back there, like in Episode Two. Um, it's I, I really like how they've kind of designed the the out and up that kind of comes over the over the arena um, to build something that big and all dark tan with all those slopes is uh that's. Very impressive. Then you've got some smaller Star Wars vignettes. Here's a Snoke's throne room. So I think, uh, you know, in overall was a very controversial Star Wars movie. This, I think, was a, a scene that many people agreed was pretty awesome and a lot of people enjoyed watching. Some Battlefront, some Battlefront 2 looks like. Stuff, uh, some, some gameplay for Battlefront 2. It looks like there may be still some figures to be set up, but. And then you've got clone outpost here and some more little spaceships a smaller smaller scarif build um, of kind of like the, the landing platform and the, the ATSTs there I want to point out this little the high ground Segway build right there <laughs> I think that's that's a pretty funny just small little vignette there I like that some bigger into some bigger ships and stuff that uh, uh, the the indicator crashed on Jakku, and then some of the the Y wing, as mm -hmm. well as the the smaller Tie fighters and the probe droids are are really nice too. We still have builders putting on some last details here <laughs> uh, on this on this final build. I like that. Excellent detail there. And then the attack of Rexzilla, and so this is. Uh, <laughs> So, Toys R Us, or uh, not, not Toys R Us, 
Toy, toy, toy Story. story. There toy you Story. Go. There you go. Is driving a Mecha Godzilla, <laughs> crushing the uh, crushing the alien. A little bit of a different timeline there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's the trident. You've got a really nice mountaintop monastery that incorporates the snow with some big rock work. Diva and Mecca here. It appears to be signed as well, which is always cool. Here's some nice exploring kind of ice mechs. Yeah, they got a lot of, uh, bunch of classic space, Benny spaceship mechs and stuff too. The, uh, just like, looks like different drones, different mechs and stuff like that. And this orange and white build here is really, really neat. It's even like like different pieces of armor. It's like the the character is kind of removing the armor. Yeah, we, I guess we kind of move into a whole section of different mechs and stuff. Mm -hmm. And the the mechs are really cool since they use a lot less of the like the the Technic ball joint pieces that Bionicle uses, and use a lot more systems. So you kind of see how you use hinge plates and uh, things like that to to get those same angles that uh, the Bionicles can, um, but using more system than the, than the, 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 um, than the Technic. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. So you can get all sorts of fun details. Then you've got a bunch of these mechs here. You've got this micro fallout shelter is pretty awesome because it had, it's like the, the lunchbox there. That's a Simon Liu build. So he built that all in the lunchbox with the tiny micro trophy figs. Then you've got Voltron here, so uh, Voltron, very popular build right now. Apocalego, Apocalego kind of rundown, kind of city, mercenaries, you know, kind of kind of builds. It looks like uh, Miami has gone downhill a little bit here. Is, is this you guys' build? Yeah. Awesome, yeah. I, I love what you've done. <laughs> very cool. Thank you. And some more, sorry, some more post-apocalypse there. In this tower of all the yes. all the Transformers. <laughs> the crazy awesome Transformer tower. <laughs> With lights. <laughs> this year is that a new addition this year? Yeah, I got them. Um, well, last year I had 108 of them. I mean, 100 of them. Now I have 108 of them. I got the four combiners up. Um, I added some backsplash on the top right there. So yeah, I mean, I try to make some a little faster to transform spe specifically for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, those are really, you want to give us a quick example of how one of them transforms for, the, for people who haven't seen them in the past? All right, so we have wind charger right here. First thing we do is uh, fold up the arms like this. Right. There you go. Then we take the front of the car, flip that out. Take the feet, flip those around, snap the legs together, like so, and then flip the whole front up, and boom, wind charger, yeah. and he rolls. Still playable, so impressive, thank you, yeah, I love seeing these every year, for sure. So then I think it's just this final section in the middle right here, and I'm pretty sure that'll have been uh, all, all of the builds. Uh, we, we always try our best not to miss anything. <laughs> pretty difficult, though, when everything, you know, everything's yeah. just on tables. There's so much. They don't have any of the theme signs up yet, so mm -hmm. I don't know if they're going to put those up or not. But here is uh, another Scarif build. You know, I thought, <laughs> I thought we were done seeing Scarif builds, but I think they're still popping up at shows. So, you know, if builders still want to keep bringing them out, we'll check them out. Sci-fi kind of battle. Yeah. Uh, the looks like almost the space. Uh, I don't remember what the theme, the Galaxy Squad kind of army back there against the all the aliens. And it's such a different take on like an alien build uh, because it's that you know blue Galaxy Squad uh, versus the more cartoonish looking aliens yeah. uh, with like a city wall there. So it almost has that like ancient city wall look to it. So yeah. I love that. Well, and for those of us who collect brick arms, we know that the. Uh, all the, the sand blue stuff is all freebies that no one ever uses. So I've never, I've never actually seen anyone use the, the sand blue right. weapons before. It's like something crashed there. 
and then we've got some beautiful moon base all along here. Uh, and there's so many little greebills and details throughout this to, to, to kind of feast your eyes on. And all the different like lights, they all kind of draw your eyes to different parts mm -hmm. of it. You know, you can see inside things, see your up, you know, inside and around. You've got the, the changing area here for the, the micro baby max. <laughs> you got a whole army of micro baby yes. max. It looks like almost like a, a fighting ring. Mm -hmm. Go in there against uh, other other baby max. I think that was um, contrary to, I guess, last year, the uh, Orville, not the Orville, the um, Belleville babies, the, the whole series yes, of max yeah, over, the, yeah. That was a uh, very scarring uh, psychological, <laughs> a lot of expensive therapy later, you can recover from that build. <laughs> yeah. This is a great build here, the Tyrannosaurus Nex, so it's like uh, T-Nex, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Turbo, I love the sun build there, yeah, that's, that's awesome. There's some nice spaceships coming around this whole corner. This is the, the ever popular monorail display. So it's, I think, is that the four different types of monorail? Some of those are, I think the, the Mtron monorail was an official uh, Lego product. Yeah, you got the, the, the classic space, the Mtron, the Blacktron, and I guess the, uh, I guess that's what, police? Yeah, space police. Yeah. I love the USS Saratoga here is a really great, that green color is very nice in the angles with that ship. I like the, because like we talked about earlier with all the, the tiling and stuff to make them smooth, but building them on the side like that, especially to get those angles, you already have that smoothness without tiles, so it makes it even look that much, you know, more slick. And then a big layout here, so it looks like the builder's still hard at work, so what is this going to be? It's going to be a submarine in the beach, and hopefully it's going to be finished tomorrow. <laughs> That is always the goal, isn't it? That's the dream. <laughs> I love what you've done with these plants. Can you talk about those real quick and how that came together? Those were built by my friend Dan. They came together basically table scraps. Okay. <laughs> he went to work with a box of parts, and he came up with that plant design, and then it looked great, so he expanded. Yeah, very nice. Well, thank you so much, and good luck. I think Good luck finishing it. <laughs> Come back tomorrow. For sure. We'll stop by for a more in-depth video. Some smaller micro ships here. Some more massive space. Looks like something may have crashed with all the, the fire and mm -hmm. stuff there. All the interior rooms in here. It looks, so it looks like this giant thing on the right was a ship that crashed. You can, like the engines there, and then all of these rooms, you've got all the guys inside. Things aren't going so well. Yeah. Uh, Star Wars build. That's a, that's a um, battle from. Uh, a Clone Wars episode. Okay. Um, that's uh, pretty iconic to one of the beginning episodes where you start to see the character um, Savage Press in the series. Got a Blacktron fast attack carrier. The red and white there. And then I love this, the Puff 47. Uh, this is the colors on this are so great with that, that brown tan. Mm -hmm. It's kind of that very like outdoorsy forest look. Yeah, especially like I like how they mix the, the lime green with the dark green. And then the medium green, but then they also accented with the with the brown and the tan, um, adding especially like those the um, the almost like the the sandbag pieces and the tan mm -hmm. on top, give it that extra texture coming down towards the towards the bridge. Yeah. And then here is a big red and black uh, spaceship. It looks like it's got kind of accompanying ships and mechs and vehicles to go along with it. Uh, so there's so many different pieces and slopes to get that effect going. That's definitely not easy with Lego. Yeah. And then. Uh, I guess pretty close to being done here. You got the, the Duplo uh, Duplo Star Destroyer. <laughs> That's a classic. <laughs> I love how even with Duplo though, it's such a recognizable shape. Like yeah. that, the big gray wedge is just immediately recognizable. <laughs> yeah, and then the uh, ever iconic from Lego games, the the TT mm -hmm. uh, 3D logo. And I think that will actually wrap it up for us. So we'll end with the TT Games logo there. I'm I'm pretty sure we. As far as I know, we've shown every single build, or as much as we can, yes, as, as much as we can, showing you everything on display here at Brick Fair. So thanks so much for sticking with us. I don't know how many hours we've been going now, but it's been a lot of fun. Thank you very much, Caden, for joining me. Uh, this has been great. It's always good to, to get another builder's input into to what the builds are here. So it's always fun to have, have you join me. Yeah, nice to, nice to uh, 
be, you know, helpful. <laughs> so, <sure>. yeah. <laughs> right, and thanks everyone for watching. I, I hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you soon.